Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto become a powerful ninja samurai and awakens the forgotten power. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The blonde six-year-old was walking through a village, hearing the whispers he always tried to ignore. People mutter bad things about him and saying that he was worthless. He really wished they would stop. It wasn't his fault that he was an orphan. He came to a tea house, one of the only stores that would sell to him called Nothing But Dango. This restaurant and Ichiruka Raymond were the only ones that would. And he didn't have the money for Ichiruka right now. With a sigh, he went in. As usual, it was quiet and nearly empty. The owners actually did this because they needed something to do in retirement. Oh, hello Naruto-kun, the old lady said. Hello boss Anne, he said with a bow to her. Not matter how much he pranked other people, boss Anne, Jai-san, her husband, A.M., and Tucci would never get anything but his thanks and respect. He grinned when he saw a cloaked visitor was here, his conical hat on his table next to a pot of tea and a few sticks of dango. Oh, someone else has discovered the greatness of the food here. I was afraid that I was your only customer. Dot but this means I no longer have you all to myself. Boss Anne laughed. I still have time for you, Naruto-kun. I will go get you some tea and some sweet bean paste. Or would you prefer Dango as well? Naruto grimaced, he had seen how a purple-haired Chunin acted when she had some. I won't end up like Anko, will I? Dai-san laughed as he heard that. It isn't Dango that makes her act like that, Naruto-kun, the old man said, ruffling his hair. She is just happy to have some. Tell you what, if you finally give in and try some, I won't charge you for them. Naruto grinned. Sure. Give me ten sticks. They laughed at his ever-present undying appetite. Boss Anne ushered him to a table next to the other person and said she will be right back with some tea. While waiting, Naruto looked at the person. He was in his early twenties and had his black hair tied in a ponytail. Hello. Hello, he replied evenly. Which made Naruto ecstatic, he didn't say it full of hate like others. Naruto could see his green eyes were filled with compassion, not hate when he looked at him to speak. He instantly made it to Naruto's top ten list of people not to prank. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, I am glad to meet you. I am known by Akechi Mitsuhide, Yuzumaki-san. He was very formal and well-spoken. Naruto grinned at being called San. You don't have to call me that, Akechi-sama. I would like my friends to call me Naruto. Friends, Mitsuhide asked. Naruto's face lackened. I'm sorry, I should have asked you first. I apologize. Mitsuhide smiled at the boy. Don't, I was just surprised is all. You seem like a nice boy, where are your parents? Thought I don't have any, Naruto said, a little depressed. Mitsuhide frowned and fully took in Naruto's appearance. His cloths were not the best and he was malnourished. But before he could make a comment on that, several men walked into the shop. Welcome to nothing but Dango, boss Ant said as she set the pot on Naruto's table. Can I help you? Yes, the leader of the three said. You see, we have a proposition for you ma'am. You see, this is a bad neighborhood. It isn't so bad, boss Ant said. Now, what does that have to do with things? Well, we can help you protect your store from anyone and anything. All we ask in return is a little money for our services. Asan frowned. I appreciate the gesture but no. That is too bad, the man said. The guy on his left went over to a table. Before breaking one of the legs. Because, we really aren't giving you a choice. Either pay up or. You will do no such thing, Mitsuhide said as he stood up and faced them. I will not allow petty crooks to break the law in my sight. Back off, the third guy said to him. We are former ninja. So meaning you did not have the skill or heart to still be ninja at so young an age, Mitsuhide said. Leave now or I will stop you. The leader smiled. I will have to use you as an example then. To show everyone here what happens when they decide to oppose me. He looked to the second guy. Kill him. He grinned and pulled a ninja two out and approached him. But before he could go three steps, Mitsuhide threw off his cloak and drew his own sword. In a single move, he pulled it out and slashed it across the man's throat, killing him. Badijutsu, Mitsuhide stated. His cloak now off, Naruto got a full look at him. He stood near six feet tall. At his waist was the sheath for his katana, and next to it was a wakizashi. He was a samurai. He wore wairoi armor, armor that protected his chest and back along plates that bent and moved on his upper arms and legs. He had hakama pants and shirt on under it. All of it was colored light blue and in some purple. He faced the other two and raised his blade to point at them. Leave now or die with your comrade. I doubt scum like you would have the honor to finish what you have started. But they only laughed. If it isn't one of those worthless samurai, the leader said. Still spouting that garbage about honor and fair play. You people will never realize, will you? You no longer have a place in this world. 
Not you nor your words. Honor, justice, doing what is right, Mitsuhide replied. These are more than words, they are ideals. Of how men should live their life. As long as people still desire these, the samurai will never lose their place in the world. As long as there are those that still honor the old ways, the samurai will have the strength to continue on, no matter the adversary ahead of us. And as long as my body still holds breath, I shall never let men like you do as they please. Nice speech, the former ninja told him. Two bad words will not save you. He nodded to his remaining man. He stepped to the side and started doing hand signs. But what he didn't expect was the sword to cut his hand off. The jutsu inside here will destroy the building. I can't allow that either. The man was going into shock as he looked at the stumps that were his arms. His mouth tried to work but didn't. He looked up and saw Mitsuhide finish him. Mitsuhide turned back to the remaining man. Leave now with your dishonor or I will take your life as well. The man stumbled back before he ran through the door. Mitsuhide looked at Boss San and Naruto. I apologize for causing such a circa. Look out. Naruto ran by him, grabbed the drop ninja too, and stabbed the third man in the stomach. The bandit dropped the knife he was going to use to stab Mitsuhide with as he looked at the sword in his gut and the child holding it. I was. Killed by the demon brat. He fell backwards, his eyes glazing over. Naruto looked at what he just did and began to shake. He looked like he was going to be sick. I just. I just killed Hai. Naruto bent over and retched. Dot I'm sorry, Basan, I'll clean it up. He went to get a mop. No, honey, you go sit down. But I. Go sit, she told him again. As for you young man, she said to Mitsuhide. Thank you. It does an old woman good to see that men like you are still out there. It was my duty to do it ma'am. I could not let them as I stated. Your duty is to obey your master, you did that by choice. He tensed at the word master. Sit down, I shall get you another pot of tea. She went in the back and told her husband what happened. He came storming out. Those them, Mitsuhide Sama. They are, he replied. Then we owe you much, he said with a bow. I shall return soon, I must get the police. When he left, Mitsuhide stood up and sat across from Naruto. Pouring his tea in a cup, he set it in front of Naruto. This will help settle your nerves. Naruto started drinking from the cup and slowly, life returned to his blue eyes. Now, why did you do that? You could have died. Be because he was going to K kill you, Akechi-sama, Naruto said. You defended Ba-san and Jai-san so I had to do that. Mitsuhide nodded. Your honor demanded it of you. Naruto looked up from the cup. Huh. I defended people close to you. So you defended me in return to honor what was done. You could do no less. It is Bushido, a code of honor that all samurai follow. Naruto put his head to the table. I I don't understand. People say that the samurai are just normal men, that they can't possible fight a shinobi. But you fought three. Do, Naruto-san. Don't lie, Bushido forbids it. You fought the other and won. D. Two right here and did it in only three moves. Well, they just assumed I was weak so that helped. But the deciding factor was that I was in the just, honorable, and right. Remember what I said. That they are more than words, that they are ideals. They are. Under this armor is in flesh, Naruto-san. It is the ideals that make samurai who they are. And ideals cannot die. Naruto was silent until after Mitsuhide's tea came. Do. Do you have a dream, Mitsuhide-sama? Yes, to one day see peace in our lands. Naruto swallowed, his dream seemed so much more important than his dream to become Hokage. I wanted to become Hokage, to be respected. No one respects me or even treats me like a person. Wanted? You mean it isn't anymore? Naruto shook a little as he looked at the samurai hopefully. I want to prove to the world that honor, justice, and right are not just words, but perspectives. That there is still a use to those who have them. He swallowed some tea to settle his stomach against the smell that was starting. Dot will. Will you teach me to be samurai? Mitsuhide leaned back in his chair. This boy, on his way to become a ninja, was asking him to teach him Bushido. Dot it is a very tight code of conduct. Can you live with that? I will, Naruto assured him. I will not stop for anything to get my dream. Mitsuhide nodded. Then your first lesson in Bushido is never say anything that you do not mean. Lord Akechi, Naruto said to him as he bowed to his adoptive father. Are you sure you wish me to do this? Naruto was now eight and was to attend the ninja academy back in Kanoha. He no longer lived there anymore. He lived in a mansion outside of town that Mitsuhide had built. He would no longer travel but would live there, protecting the small town outside it and serving the lord there. I am, Naruto. Aren't you excited to go back? I am not, Lord Akechi, Naruto told him. He now wore sky blue Hakama cloths with an orange spiral on the back. And his blonde hair was in a ponytail just like his father's. I do not wish to be a ninja, but a samurai like you, father. Mitsuhide smiled as he stood up and went to the door.
He slid it close and returned to his seat. Now what is it really, Naruto? Naruto instantly relaxed. In public and view, samurai must be regal and noble in appearance. But the room was not in view anymore. Father, you know how I was treated. And no doubt, it will continue if I return. And. The ninja has taken our place in the world, I would have nothing to do with them. But Sahide sighed. Naruto, you can learn to be a ninja, but still be samurai. Stealth, jutsu, and silent killing is as necessary in combat as are your daisho. Naruto raised a hand to his pride and soul. It was a katana and wakizashi his father had given him. Both were finely crafted, folded several hundred times, and could mold chakra through it. The words honor, courage, commitment was carved into the blade of the wakizashi, while the words for the fallen, this blade shall protect thee on his katana. They were fox claw and fox fang respectively. Naruto frowned but nodded. As you wish then, father. He reached down and picked up his friend, Kitsu. Looks like we are going to school tomorrow. Excited. The fox kid gave him a mew saying he was. Just wait, Kitsu, we will show them who is tougher. He set the fox kid on the ground and bowed to his father. By your leave, Lord Akechi. He turned and walked from the room. Mitsuhide smiled proudly at his son. He didn't know at first if Naruto could do what he said. But to his surprise, Naruto did. He never stopped studying until he understood it. Asking for help only when he had to, he was a quick study and had earned those swords at his waist. He was really surprised when he brought the injured fox kid home with him one day. It would let no one but him near him willingly. It was cute to see a furball that could fit in even Naruto's little hand growl at someone threateningly. And once he had healed, he wouldn't leave. Moreover, others showed up as well. They seemed to be attached to Naruto. Kitsu was the first kid born to the small clan that lived on their grounds now and wouldn't leave Naruto's side. He could even fight with him, though it was still limited by his small size. He reached down and scratched the head of Karara, the leader of the pack, and that same kid he brought back nearly two years ago. Looks like both our sons are ready to make us proud. Karara growled a little. Yeah, my son has already made me proud too. Naruto woke up at dawn and put on his hakama. Then he opened the secretary that held his armor. It was an Oiroi armor just like his father's except for two details. Well his father's was purple, Naruto's was dark blue. And his father only had the Akechi clan seal, five sakura petals in a circle. Well Naruto had that on his chest, his Uzumaki spiral was on his back. But pride, he put each piece in place and strapped them down. When he was done, he looked in a mirror and nodded approvingly that he looked like a smaller, different color, mirror image of his father. Lastly, he strapped a quiver of arrows and a bow to his back and placed the fox fang and claw at his waist. He walked out of his room to smell breakfast was ready. Good morning father. Grandfather. Naruto almost jumped onto the older man, but recovered his lost bearing and bowed. I am honored to greet you, Lord Akechi Hidemitsu. The older man stood up and returned the bow. Before smiling and motioned that the door was closed. Come here runt and give your grandfather a hug. Naruto needed no more invitation as he ran and jumped into his arms. I missed you. I missed you too grandfather. Why wasn't I told that you would be coming? It was a surprise, Mitsuhide told his son. We both will be walking you to the academy this morning. Naruto's smile grew to a mile wide and hugged his grandfather all the harder. Ak. Careful, I'm old, Hidemitsu told him. Never, Naruto told him. Great men never grow old, grandfather, they grow more knowledgeable. Naruto straightened and sat down at the table to eat his breakfast. He felt Kitsu rub his leg, wanting attention, so he laid his chopsticks across his bowl of rice and gave it to him. After lightly scolding him because he knew better than to do that at the table. I am ready, father, grandfather. Then let us go, Hidemitsu said as he stood. And show them something the world will never believe. They were stopped at the east gate of Konoha. Names and reason for entering. Lord Akechi Mitsuhide of the clan Akechi from the outskirts of Konoha, Mitsuhide told them. This is my father, Akechi Hidemitsu, and my son, Akechi Naruto. Today, I am enrolling my son into the academy. They blinked at the name Naruto and looked at him. Naruto stood up all the straighter when they did. His hair and eyes were similar, but he was much bigger than the Naruto that disappeared two years ago. And he looked nothing like him. Dot oh, I think we received word. Yes, here it is. The chunin on the right held up a piece of paper. It says that you requested this a month ago and received the approval of the Hokage, Lord Akechi. You need only carry this passport on you from now on, he gave one to Naruto and Mitsuhide. Lord Hidemitsu, you were not expected, so I have to give you a temporary passport. It is alright, young man, Hidemitsu told him. I am just walking with my grandson this one time. I doubt it will happen often enough to warrant a permanent one. With a bow, they walked forward through the gate and into the city. Ah, what a formal family, Izumo stated. And that boy, Kitetsu said, he did not have a single emotion on his face. Dot and did you notice the fox kid on his shoulder? I did. 
So they are the Fox Clan Akechi. This is going to be one interesting class, Kitetsu finished. Naruto looked around at all five kids and frowned. They were acting like, well, kids. Jumping, hooping, hollering, acting like animals. Even the fox kids behaved better. Kitsu rubbed his cheek in agreement to his analysis. He gave him a pat on the head before walking through the door. Hello, he said once, to see if he could get their attention. The teacher at the head of the class looked up and at the clock. You must be the new student. You didn't have to show up for another half hour, he told him. I am Yamino Ruka. Naruto bowed to him. I am honored, Uruka sensei I am Akechi Naruto. Behind him, his father and grandfather entered. As they looked at the class, they all went quiet as they studied the three. I too am honored to meet you, Mitsuhide said to Uruka after a minute. I have actually heard much about you, Uruka san And all of it is good things. I expect you to make my son much stronger than he already is. He said that with a bow. Uruka returned the bow a little shocked. It was then he noticed something. All three of them has a daisho at their waist. Dot if I am not intruding, are you, by chance, eh? Mitsuhide held up his hand to stave him off. That would be up to Naruto to reveal to him classmates. Not us. But yes we are. Naruka straightened and bow again to them. I am honored to receive you. This shocked the three of them. My parents drilled it into my head to respect you before they died. Both Mitsuhide and Hitomitsu smiled at him. I see that my son is in the best of hands then. He knelt down and looked Naruto in the eyes. Go with honor, my son. He ruffled his hair before standing. Hey, Naruto said, moving the strands back into place. I shall see you this evening, father, grandfather. He watched them leave and turned back to the class. Is this all of them, Haruka sensei No, only the early risers like yourself. There is now a total of 27 students. So please wait until they all get here. Naruto nodded all looked at the five. One was a girl with hair he would have thought was dyed blonde if it wasn't for the scent from here that lacked bleach. There was a boy that smelled of dog and had brown hair. It was spiky and a mess. Another, the most reserved one there after Naruto, was a boy with black eyes and hair. It was spiky in the back only, reminding Naruto of a chicken. The next was a sky girl with hair the color of his armor and pale eyes he thought was rather lovely looking. The last, and loudest, was a girl with sakura pink hair. Naruto brushed the emblem on his chest and sat down at one of the desk. The one that smelled of dog came over to him. And he was in fact carrying a puppy in his coat. You smell an awful lot like a fox. And I don't mean the sense on you. The same can be said about you and dogs, Naruto replied. Ah, what is with the armor and weapons, eh? Hey Kiba, please be and nice, the pale-eyed girl said. H he is an Aokechi. They are one of the oldest warrior sea clans on the sea continent. Naruto smiled at her. And may I have the name of such a lovely flower that knows who I am? H Hiuga H Hinata. Naruto straightened when she said it. Yes, of course you are. What are you talking about, Kiba asked. But I, like Kami, do no play with dice and do not believe in coincidence. On several occasions has the Akechi and Hayuga fought together and against each other. He held his hand to Hinata. Shaking a little, she placed hers on his. Naruto bent down and kissed her hand. It is my extreme pleasure to meet you, Hayuga Hinata. And I look forward to serving with you. Hinata blushed deep red as she nodded. Hey, whoa, back off mister. Kiba about yelled, taking her hand from his. You can't just be doing that. Naruto frowned at him. My name is Akechi Naruto, not Mr. And you are. Inuzuka Kiba. The famous dog clan of Konoha. Then, as the heir of the fox clan Akechi, I guess that makes us rivals. I guess so. Naruto grinned and stuck his hand out to shake his. I am glad to meet someone that has confidence in their abilities. You look to be a strong opponent and I am eager to spar with you. Kiba dropped his jaw and started to laugh. You are making it hard to dislike you. I get that a lot when people actually talk to me. Hinata-chan, Kiba-san, this is my friend, Kitsu. The kid mewed. And this is Akamaru, Kiba said. The puppy gave a bark. Hinata smiled a little. You two brought your pets with you? No, they said. Kitsu helps me in fighting. Yeah, the same with Akamaru. Hinata seemed a little down at that. Oh. I I brought my pee pet. F father doesn't cane no and would a likely disapprove. She pulled down the zipper of her coat and took out a small ferret kit. This is bandit. The little guy was asleep when she pulled her out. But she opened her eyes to look at them. She gave a squeak and Akamaru roughed while Kitsu mewed. This made Hinata smile that her best friend was making more friends. Naruto also grinned. Hey, we have three chibi bijuu here. They looked at him in confusion. Haku, the five-tailed dog. Raiju, the six-tailed weasel. And. Kaiubi, the nine-tailed fox. Biba blinked and struck a thinking pose. We kind of do. Hey, that is it, we are the Bijuu 3 from now on. No one will be stronger than us. 
Like that will happen, the blonde and pink head told them. We are going to be the strongest Kanoichi in this room. In unison, they hit a fist to their chest and smiled at each other. Obvious best friends there. Diba frowned, and there is an Achiha here so it will be hard. Thud, Naruto told him. I hate it when things are easy. Naruto stood in front of the whole class when they had all gotten there. Hello, I am Akechi Naruto. I am honored to be here, he told them all with a bow. Naruto, why don't you tell them a little about yourself, Hiruka said to him. Hi, Hiruka sensei My father is named Akechi Mitsuhide, and I don't have a mother. I am the heir of my clan which, though scattered for a moment, is the newest clan to Konoha. My clan is also one of the last remaining honorable samurai left on the continent. He held Kitsu in his hands to show him to them. This is my best friend Kitsu. We look out for each other and fight together. And I do have a dream. To show that honor, justice, and right will always have a place here. Okay, class, your first lesson today will be working on aim, Hiruka told them once Naruto sat back down with Hinata and Kiba. So go grab your ninja gear and head outside to the targets. Naruto just stood up and walked outside. He brought nothing with him but his weapons, armor, and some money to go visit Ichiruka Raymond and nothing but Dango. He smiled as he thought about lunch and afternoon snack before heading home. Adaruka sensei, where is the targets? Dust outside. Follow me, Naruto, and I'll show you. He led them outside and showed Naruto the small range. This is it. Naruto looked confused. Sensei, is this big enough? What do you mean? It is only 20 feet long. Anyone could hit a target at that distance. Now Ruka looked confused. For a student, that was a good size distance. And they would only be at the end once he felt they were ready for it. Dot Naruto, have you received formal training before this? Just what my father showed me, Naruto told him. Sasuke was behind him. He isn't talking about that sword. He is talking about kunai. Dot what is a kunai? Dot so. A samurai really has no place here with ninja. This is a kunai, dope. Sasuke took out a knife and walked to the 15-foot mark, the farthest he knew he could hit the target. With a throw, the throwing dagger hit dead center. He looked back with a look that wasn't arrogance, but wasn't far from it either. See what this training is now. I see, Naruto said. Sasuke walked to the side of target and reached for his kunai. But an arrow went through the ring. Sasuke's hand jumped back like it tried to bite him. His head turned to see Naruto was standing 30 feet back, bow in hand. Yeah, I see. The mutters of students as they saw how he easily shot that reached his ears. Impressive, Naruto. Dot well, as I do not know your skill yet, I am going to give you a little test. Very simple, the first test is to see how fast you are in firing those. The second test is to see just how far you can shot and still hit the center. Come up to the line. Now when I tell you, you will shoot as many arrows as you can for a minute. Just hit the target. Sasuke, come back down here. But the frown, Sasuke pulled his kunai and the arrow out and walked back. Hiruka held his hand up in the air when Sasuke gave it to him. Naruto put it in his quiver. Go. Naruto grabbed his first arrow, notched it, pulled it back, and let it loose. The whole thing took a second. Twice as long a student with a kunai who only had to grab it and throw. But as his drawing hand was already at the quiver, he kept that second a constant pace. After 20 seconds and arrows, he stopped, his quiver empty. The arrows all hit within the two inside circles. But Naruto frowned. My grandfather would have split his arrows every time. Naruka nodded. His aim under speed was incredible in his opinion. But the ammunition he could hold was slow to draw and limited the number he could carry. He grinned as he considered making a note in his report card to suggest putting storage seals on the inside to hold more. Well, even for a student that has had training, that is impressive. Now I want you to go to where you feel comfortable and make five shots. As far as you know you can hit. Take your time. Diba grinned while Naruto replaced his arrows back inside his quiver. Everyone back up. I got the feeling he is going for a walk. Naruto carefully counted his paces from the target until he reached 52 feet. Two years of practice and he still couldn't reach across his family's range. He faced the target, ignoring the looks of disbelief, and drew a single arrow. Placing it on the string, he looked downrange as he brought the string to his cheek. After a moment, he let it go. It hit Bullseye, about to go out of it at the top right. Naruto compensated with the next shot and was now left and low of the center. He took a deep breath, looked down the shaft, then passed it to the target. Lifting it up a tenth of an inch, he let it go. It hit in line, to the left of the target. Another deep breath and holding it, he hit center. Letting his breath out while making sure not to move the bow, he drew his last shot and notched it. Satsu, Naruto mumbled as he let it go. Sasuke heard him say split, so he ran up there to check. His fifth arrow had split his fourth, making two perfect center shots. I don't believe it. Being able to hit something several times faster than the other means nothing if he can hit you long beforehand, Aruka told his class when they gathered around him. 
I actually trained with a bow when I was younger, but stopped when I was told that I would find it useless by an older ninja. I am not going to tell you the same thing, as you saw it was far from the truth. Naruto, he turned to the young samurai, that was good, but I can tell you still need work with it. But there is no one here that can teach you that very well. So until then, you will have to train with it at home. Hi, Haruka-sensei. What should I do right now? Well, since you and Sasuke obviously do not need help with distance right now, you two can spar. Hi, Haruka-sensei, Naruto said before he walked a bit away after retrieving his arrows. Using half the broken one, he drew a circle in the dirt. Ready, Ichiha. It is to jutsu, samurai, as in hand to hand. Remove your weapons. Naruto nodded as he placed his bow and arrows outside the circle. Don't forget your fox and swords. Naruto snarled. Kitsu will not be fighting so I will place him outside the circle. But I will never be parted from my daisho. Oh, I see. Too afraid to be without those useless blades. A fist met his face. I may not be a monk, but I know how to fight without weapons. Insult me if you wish but ever say anything against my swords again and I will end you life. Sasuke jumped back to his feet and wiped the blood from his nose. He was more than angry. No one had ever struck him before. His father may have ignored him or told him to be like Itachi, but he never once raised his hand to him. Like you could, pathetic swordsman. He may now hate his guts, but he would not go that far again, at least just yet. Naruto took a deep breath. He disliked ninja enough as is besides a very select few. And this one just kept adding to the list. One more insult and honor will demand I make you pay. Sasuke grinned. An angry opponent was a reckless one. Your clan is nothing but a bunch of forgotten warriors, moaning about the good old days, better left in the history books that no one will ever read. Naruto drew the fox claw and ran at him. Sasuke revealed his kunai in hand and intercepted it. He then dropped his right leg and twisted to the side. Naruto fell forward and Sasuke went for the stab. For that punch, those damn swords are mine. But Naruto, having went with the fall, was not there for him to injure. He had rolled back to his feet and was running at Sasuke again, this time, letting his head rule. He attacked with his sheath, forcing Sasuke to block it with his kunai, while the fox claw was hidden by it and went in for the stab unmolested. Both students went flying backwards, a bruise forming on Naruto's cheek, while another bruise appeared on Sasuke's. What the hell are you two doing, Iruka roared. He insulted myself, my clan, and my swords unprovoked. When I warned him not to say anything again, he continued, Naruto told him, looking for a way around the teacher to finish this. Naruto, I know that as a samurai, you pride is great and will only take so much. But while at this school you will learn to take more. Sasuke smirked at the enraged warrior that struggled to give a hi, Iruka sensei Iruka turned to Sasuke, even matter. What the hell is wrong with you? What was one of the first lessons I taught you Sasuke? He swallowed, never provoke an enemy that you know nothing about. And you do know that he has received combat training. Look what almost happened. You would have died had I not intervened. His blood would not be the first that my hands were stained with, Naruto growled. Liar, Sasuke growled. Samurai will not like, Sasuke, Iruka told him. For that would be a dishonor to himself, and he would have to commit seppuku, suicide to save his family honor. Something that seems to be lacking from you if this is what I can expect. Sasuke's scowl went from Naruto to Iruka. Are you saying my family has no honor? We are one of the founding clans of Konoha. The fact that your clan never forgets to flaunt, Naruto stated, his anger abating. That and your shuriken. Oh, the little samurai. Naruto's hand reached for the hilt of the fox fang, while Iruka glared at both of them. That is enough from the both of you. If this is how you wish to act, then you can go home. Imagine how your fathers will react to that. Sasuke calmed down instantly. Naruto actually looked like he would be sick. I thought so. I want you two to take some time to cool off. I will see you in an hour, Sasuke. Naruto, the Hokage would like to welcome you as a student to the academy, so you will go to the Hokage Tower. Afterwards, return a half hour later. If it is lunch time, be in class by one. Hi, Iruka sensei they both said before giving one last glare to each other and walking away. Naruto picked up his weapons as he did. Before Naruto went far, Kiba and Hinata came up to him. That was amazing, Kiba said. You were really going to kick his ass. Ah no. Th that was V very good, and Naruto-san, Hinata said to him. But Naruto wasn't exactly happy with it. I should have gotten him with the first strike. Now Naruto expected one of them to say something against this. He just didn't expect the one to be Hinata. And no, and Naruto-san, he was already, you were not. You envisioned a H honorable fight. He pl planned an assassination. He H had hit H his kunai B behind his arm. How did you know, Naruto asked him. Because we would have done the same, Kiba said to him. That is what we are supposed to do, take every advantage. 
That is something about being ninja that I am afraid you may never be able to force yourself to do. Aruto looked shocked with realization. He had known that once, and he would have expected that. He swallowed and nodded. This is going to be harder than I thought. Hey, Kiba said, wrapping an arm around his shoulders, no worries mate. We will be there to keep you out of trouble. After all, that is what a pack is for. Right Akamaru. The puppy barked. H hi, Hinata stated as Bandit crawled up her coat and atop her head. W we are the Bibiju 3 after all. Naruto smiled and nodded his thanks. Although. I would have liked to see Sasuke's face when his kunai broke on my armor. This made Kiba laugh aloud while Hinata giggled. I have to go speak with the Hokage. I will see you soon. He bowed to his friends and walked away. Aruka did not miss this exchange, and he smiled. Maybe there was hope for Naruto after all. Behind him, the self-proclaimed strongest Kanoichi duo was talking about what they had seen. And they were still talking like twins and speaking at the same time. But Sasuke did wasn't right, but Naruto shouldn't have lost his temper. True, his code of honor demanded that he do something to stop it. But to kill him. Not that Sasuke is clean of all wrongs, using such a dirty trick against Naruto, they said. So what should we do? Naruto looks so regal that it is hard not to blush when we look at him. But Sasuke is so awesome. They looked at Hinata and saw she had a slight blush on her face as Naruto walked away. Blackmail, the said with an evil grin. It is just creepy that they do that, Shikamaru said to his best friend, Choji. They ignored him. Looks like we can leave her to the Naruto fan club. They took on a thoughtful look. We wonder how he got his hair that shiny. What conditioner does he use? They ran a hand through their equally long hair and continued thinking about it until it was their turn to practice. And so the 47 Ronin stood before the body of the man their master had wished slain before he committed seppuku. These remaining samurai nodded to each other at their task complete. And at the what they had also done. They had committed murder. The surviving 23 men, tired from their battle with the retainers of Yashinaka Kira, all knelt where they were. Those that were left behind wounded were no longer fighting, their honor saved and spared. Those already dead, waiting for them with Kami. As one, they slid their tanto from their belts and stabbed them into their own stomachs, cutting from left to right. They had not their seconds to cut their heads off to end the pain. So they merely remained kneeling and unwelcome death when he came for them, Siratobi finished. The revenge of the 47 Ronin, Naruto said when he entered. He bowed to the Hokage when he looked up. You have summoned me, Lord Hokage. Yes, please take a seat, Akechi-kun. And do please close the door. Naruto did and sat down. Siratobi then smiled. I was so afraid you had died, Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto grinned. I am afraid you are mistaken, Lord Hokage. My name is Akechi, not Yuzumaki. A moment later, he finally laughed. It has been far too long, old man. Siratobi sighed at hearing that again, how he had missed it. Yes it has. Honestly, I had thought you had died. You could have written me a letter. Naruto shook his head. I was busy, Lord Hokage. There was much for me to learn from my father. As there is now still. Manners was obviously under the things that you had learned. I know all about the rule of behind closed doors, Naruto, yet you still call me that. I'm not sure I prefer this over old man. It is a title you have earned many times sir. And to disrespect that title would be to disrespect you. And for just spending time with me when you could, I could never do that. But if you wish me to, I shall return to calling you old man. Saratobi looked at Naruto in a new light. A question came to him that he had to know. Naruto, if your lord was to order you to kill yourself, would you? Is that what you wish, Lord Hokage? You need only tell me and I will. He was very serious about it. Saratobi sighed, he was fully taken to being a samurai. No, I do not wish you to. And don't your family already serve another lord? That is a special case. My father took his position to keep honor. But with the understanding that if need be, he is just doing this to protect the town. It is not official, thus he cannot give orders like our real lord. Me? Siratobi assumed. That remains to be seen, Naruto told him. You have proven your honor to me so I accept you as such. And my recountenance to my father, Akechi Mitsuhide, has put you in high standing with my clan. But they must see for themselves first. Siratobi nodded. In truth, he did not like that he might hold such a clan like that. And what do you think of that? Naruto smiled. Only one thing would make me happier. Siratobi grinned. This hat on my head. No, Naruto told him, making him drop his jaw. The servant cannot become the lord. I may become the lord of my clan and even the village I live in, but I will never become the lord over the Akechi clan. And I serve you. Hmm. Dot seems to me that you serve me, not the title right. Naruto blinked. Yes. Then you can still become Hokage. Naruto still shook his head. I may or I may not, it doesn't matter anymore. I wish only to prove that samurai are not just for the history books anymore. 
Did someone insult you for being one, Naruto? Yes, but I do not wish to involve you in a child's fight. And with what was said and done, that is all it was. If you want it like that then I shall remain out of it. I welcome you to Kanahagakur, the village hidden in the leaves. I expect you to uphold the will of fire, the will to protect this village, and its people. Now that that is out of the way, tell about your life ever since you left, Naruto. Especially your father and grandfather. Naruto smiled. There was oh so much to tell. Well, first off, I was loved. I met Lord Mitsuhide when three crooks walked into nothing but Dango. Naruto walked out of the tower at around 11. He headed back to the academy to find out that they had gone to lunch. With a smile on his face, he flipped a coin, leaving it to Luck who he visited first. Ichiruka Raymon. Naruto entered and sat down on his favorite stool. Tuchi raised both his eyebrows when he saw the Daisho. What would you like, Samurai-san? Well. I am really hungry so give me the Yuzumaki special, two beef, two maizo, two chicken, and two shrimp. Tuchi blinked a few times before walking around the counter and looked him in his sapphire eyes. Dot Naruto. His answer was the boy grinning before Tuchi wrapped him in a powerful hug. How have you been my boy? I have been great, Tuchi-san. I have missed both you and Aim-chan. Yes, of course, Aim. Aim, come down and greet a good customer. Yes father, she said coming down the steps and walking through the curtain door to the stairs. Hello, thank you for coming to our shop. The honor is all mine, Aim-chan. She looked at him in surprise and instantly recognized him. Jumping on him to give him a hug, she said, Naruto. Where have you been? I was adopted. My father is a Kechi Mitsuhide, and I live outside the village in the 120 minutes away just down the main road. Why didn't you visit, she demanded. Because my father was teaching me to use these, he said with a gesture to his swords. I'm a samurai now. She dropped her jaw on him. Wow. Just wow. I never would have thought that. She looked him up and down. You really have changed. So have you, A.M. Chan. You're so tall now. He only came up to her shoulders. He then hugged them both. I really have missed you. And I have been dying for good Raymond. I'll go make you some then, Tuchi said. The Yuzumaki special, coming up. And this is on the house. No, I couldn't accept that. You can and will, Naruto, A.M. told him forcefully. And now that you can visit, you better come by here more often. He is so kawaii. She scooped the little fox up and cuddled him to her face. Who is this, Naruto? My partner, Kitsu, Naruto said, rubbing his ears. My friends at the academy has a dog, and the other has a ferret. I doubt they are as cute as this little guy. Naruto could have laughed, Kitsu was obviously enjoying the attention. So, looks like you are on your way to become Hokage. Nah, I found a dream that is far better. Oh, A.M. Chan, this is a picture of my father and grandfather. Naruto pulled out one his father had taken when he gave Naruto his swords. Naruto still laughed at the face he made when he got them. A.M. obviously thought it was funny too because she laughed as well. But then she blushed as she looked at Mitsuhide's image. Your father is very handsome, Naruto-kun. You actually look a lot like him. Yeah, I just wish I was his real son or that his wife was still alive so I could have a mom as well. But I am more happy now than any other time in my life so I won't complain. Hard to believe I have a grandfather, an aunt, cousins, and other family. And they are all arranging their affairs and moving here. His grin couldn't have been bigger. And I am clan heir, isn't that something? His nose twitched when the first bowl was set on the counter. Raymond. Belatedly, he thought about his dignity. But as he was already digging in, all he could do was salvage it. Pardon me. Normally, I have more control than that. Gucci smiled before turning to A.M. Let that fox breath while you close the curtain so Naruto can be himself while he is here. Arigato, Tuchi-san, Naruto sat before he ate the bowl of Raymond. Naruto walked back into class content and full. With a sigh, he sat back down in his chair and waited as he had arrived 15 minutes early. Only the Achiha was there. But he wasn't going to let him ruin his good mood. Hey dope. No, he wasn't. Dot I said, hey dope. His reply was just another content sigh. I'm talking to you. You talk too much for a person that is dead to rights. That stung Sasuke's pride, but he was right, had Aruka not stopped him, that sword would have gone through his head. He remained quiet until everyone else arrived. Nothing of really much interest happened the rest of the day. Sasuke and Naruto glared at each other, but made no other move to fight. For which, Aruka was glad. He did not need two of his students killing each other. When the final bell rang, they all stood up to leave. Hinata-chan, Naruto said to her. May I walk you home? She blushed and nodded yes. Kiba wasn't sure if he should growl or laugh, so he just shook his head and headed home. Naruto walked in silence, his hand never leaving the hilt of the fox fang. Ahead of them, Hinata saw her cousin and started falling back. Naruto noticed this and stopped. What troubles you, Lady Hayuga? And nothing, and Naruto-san. 
Hinata-sama came from behind Naruto, and Hinata looked even more pale. Who is this with you? Naruto turned around and saw a boy maybe a year older with pitch black hair and the same pale eyes as Hinata. It is customary to give your name first when you ask for someone else's, Naruto told him. I am Hyuga-niji, Hinata's cousin. Naruto looked at Hinata for confirmation and she nodded, still pale. I am Akechi Naruto. Why is your cousin so afraid of you? Because she is weak and is afraid of even a mouse. Naruto straightened his back. If she was weak, then she wouldn't be trying to become a shinobi. You know nothing of her, Niji said, his voice still impassive. I know enough. He turned back to Hinata. Let us continue, Lady Hyuga. He wrapped his arm around hers and walked away. And no one H has ever d dismissed him out like that, Hinata told him. My respect is earned, not given, Naruto told her. He could feel Niji seed behind him but couldn't care less. When they reached the gates to the Hyuga estate though, he found Niji already there standing next to a man around the age of Mitsuhide. He was frowning at them. You, young man, let go of my daughter. Naruto complied and bowed to him. I was merely walking her home, Lord Hyuga. The Ashi looked him up and down. Why are you dressed for war? I am dressed for combat as that is what I am to be learning. The Ashi focused on his swords. Akechi, was it? By any chance, would that be the same Akechi clan that my clan fraught with before the founding of Konoha? It would, Naruto told him. My father, Akechi Mitsuhide, is the clan leader as was his father, Hidemitsu, before him. The Ashi nodded. Then I trust you had nothing but honorable intentions walking her home. I had none other. Anata, head inside. Niji, next time you bother me, make sure it is for something of importance. He Ashi turned and walked inside. By the way, Akechi Naruto, please invite your father to visit some time. A moment later, he was gone. Both Anata and Niji had dropped their jaw, they had not expected that. Just who are you, Niji asked again. Niji Nisan, he is an Akechi, the same clan that is allied to ours for over a hundred years before Kanoha's founding. From the clan history scrolls, Hinata reminded. You mean his ancestors are some of the strongest warriors ours has ever fought. Naruto brushed a hand over his Akechi crest on his chest. Lady Hyuga, I must bid you farewell. I have something I must do before I return home. He gave her a bow and walked away. The Ashi watched the exchange and took it in. If the boy was an example of most of the clan, then he would do well to strengthen old ties. And a glance at the interaction between him and Hinata, make it clear his daughter was the key to it. He was about to go read up on some of the old clan laws when he stopped. The Akechi were notorious for their ability to judge a person's mettle. And they only respected those they thought strong. He had given Hiashi the proper respect for his station. He had given Niji none. But he held Hinata in a higher position than himself. Maybe he had misjudged her. He looked back and saw his daughter writing a note and was about to give it to a servant. And who is that for? Hinata froze and turned to face him. It was for why you, father. Well, I am right here so tell me. And stop stuttering, it makes you sound weak when you shouldn't. Hinata looked downtrodden by that, but then she noticed that his voice lacked the usual harshness. I was planning to. To go and learn about the ninjutsu the. She took a deep breath to calm herself some more. Her father just challenged her to be strong, not told her she was weak. She would be. The Inuzuka use so I will be better prepared if I ever have. To fight those that use animals in combat. She let out her breath, proud of herself that she forced herself not to stutter. The Ashi nodded. A wise move. One that will be beneficial for yourself and the clan if it works out well. Did not Akechi Naruto have a fox with him? Yes, father. Ah did I assume that fox can help him in combat. He. Has said so. The Ashi considered this bit of information. And you have been inspired to take initiative to find out about those that use animals in combat. Anada almost felt that newfound courage crumble away, leaving her with only enough to say yes, father. All right. He Ashi told her. I shall call in Yuzuka Tsum and let her know that you are coming over. I believe she has a son around your age that will show you some things if he can. Why yes father, thank you so very much. She was about to run off to them. Oh, and Hinata, he Ashi called after her, try to see if some of those skills will be useful to you and Bandit as well. Hinata almost fell at that, her father had obviously seen through her plan. I will father. I shall see you tonight for dinner. She gave him a bow and ran off, not wanting to stay around to give him the chance to change his mind. He Ashi just walked to his study and called the clan head of the Inuzuka. Yeah, the elders probably wouldn't like it that she was learned from outside the clan, but he didn't care right now so he would run interference for his daughter until she either gave up or succeeded. Hello, welcome to nothing. I know you, Ba-san said when Naruto entered. Hello, Ba-san. Naruto, what a surprise, she said with a smile. I will be right back with some tea and my husband. Please take a seat. 
With a smile, he sat down, closed his eyes, and took a deep breath. He loved the smell of this small tea house. Well, isn't this something, came from behind him. Looking at the source, he saw the only person that visited here more than himself. Midarashi Anko, a pleasure to meet you. Ah, you must be that Akechi Naruto, Anko said as she sat down. You caused quite a stir today. You visited the Hokage and it ends with him in a better mood than he has been in two years. You go to the academy and an Achiha is knocked down a peg in his arrogance. You walk a Hayuga home and leave more than a few dumbfounded. You are shaking up the very routine of this village. Despite it sounding like a bad thing, she couldn't have been smiling more. Just wait until you hear the details put the Achiha down a peg. And I'm sure you will, considering the whole class odd. Word has it you kicked his ass. It isn't far from the truth, Naruto told her. Hello, Jai-san, Naruto said when he came out. Naruto, it has been too long. I was wondering when you would come by again. My father and I moved, Naruto told him. We live outside the village now. Jai-san looked Naruto up and down, noticing his change in how he held himself and his cloths. Yeah, how is mitsuhide san Good but having trouble getting the clan back together. The families went separate ways to find a new lord to serve. I miss something, Anko asked. I am a samurai, Anko-san, Naruto told her. And because of the kindness and honor the Lord Hokage has shown, I have sworn my loyalty to him. It is still too soon to say that my whole clan will as well, but we will have a station in the town just beyond the walls if nothing else. Well now, that is something, Anko mused. How skilled is your father? I have seen him kill at least three former nin and six nuke nin. He has been busy, Ba-san said. The hazard of being the defender of a town, Naruto told them offhand. Finishing his tea, he stood and bowed to the elderly couple. It has been a pleasure to see you again, Ba-san, Jai-san. Now, just because you are a samurai now, Ba-san said, doesn't mean you can just leave without a hug. Naruto grinned, no, I guess not. He gave them both a hug and promised to come by tomorrow. With a smile after introducing Kitsu to them, he headed for home. Today was a good day, he told his friend. I hope tomorrow is just as good. He was so happy that he even encouraged Kitsu when he curled into a ball in the crook of his neck that night when he laid down to sleep that night. The sword is all there is, one with his wielder. Part of the three sword states of mind, Naruto meditated. Another day at the academy, another fight against Sasuke, another victory in his belt. The first achievement is the unity of man and sword. Once this unity is achieved, even a blade of grass can be a weapon. The second achievement is where the sword exists in one's heart when absent from one's hand. One can strike an enemy at a hundred paces even with his bare hands. The ultimate achievement is where the sword is absent from hand and heart and one is at peace with the rest of the world. He vows not to kill and to bring peace to mankind. The last words of the nameless hero, his father said. Calming, Naruto stated when he stood up. That there will one day be the day we can protect those around us without our swords. That we truly can bring peace to our lands. Naruto stretched and smiled to his father. But until then, I shall have to use everything in my power to protect them. There is no other course I would want. Glad to hear that, Pip squeak. Naruto was knocked to the ground as someone jumped on him. Even as he fell, he twisted his body and grabbed the hands of the person that attacked him. What he saw was a girl two years older than himself with hazel eyes and black shoulder-length hair. Koma. When did you get here? He gave his cousin a hug from the floor and let out a laugh. He should have realized it was her at Pip squeak. She returned the hug but quickly returned to seriousness. Well, as serious as she got. Finally finished everything in lightning so I ran my horse ragged to get here as fast as I could. We finally have a home. Helping Naruto stand, she took a good look at him. She had seen him only a few times while he traveled a little with his father. You getting taller on me? Either that or you are getting shorter. He hadn't seen his cousin in almost a year now. And he was glad to. It had been three months since the first day at the academy and progress reports had gone out. Naruto was ashamed that he was very lacking in chakra control and ninjutsu. But when he saw he was at the head of the class in distance fighting and kenjutsu, he could barely contain himself. He truly wished he could spar with someone that knew what they were doing with a sword though. I can't wait until you meet my friends, Naruto stated. We are actually heading into Konoha to visit an old ally clan, the Hayuga. Homa brightened. So that is why you are dressed like that. Naruto had fork in his armor and was wearing the light blue colored Hakama, the colors of the Akechi clan. Over his chest was the Akechi Sakura symbol. Waiting by the door was a set of Jetta sandals. His swords were still at his side. You better change over as well, we are meeting the clan head of the Hayuga clan, as well as a few in Yuzuka. He turned to his father. I shall go get the spare clothing for her. He walked out of the room, smoothing out his shirt as he did. Once Naruto was gone, Mitsuhide let his grin show. It was hard not to laugh when he showed his niece where his son was so she could ambush him. How did your adventure go? 
It went well, Lord Uncle, Coma replied. I even met a Jinchuriki while enlightening. He arched his brow. Do you know which one? The eight-tailed snake, Arachi. His name was Kadij and he uses eight swords. At once. Because I was polite to him, he said he wouldn't attack me. I even talked to him for a bit. Told me that another was in Cloud, Nai Yujido. And that she would be only second in strength to him when she took full control of her abilities. Odd uncle, there is something else. He told me the Yujido san had the slanted eyes of a cat. And he had this birthmark on his back in the shape of eight tails. And Yumi told me about the Jinchuriki she met in Earth Country. He had these black marks under his eyes. And Uncle Shoji wrote saying there was one in Suna. He has Tanuki rings around his eyes. She hesitated to say more. But Mitsuhide understood where she was going with it. Those lines on Naruto's cheeks were not scars, they were birthmarks. Or so he had thought. And he knew that it took something truly powerful to kill a demon, so they were often sealed in shrines as the legends went. It doesn't matter. Koma, have you told anyone else of this? No, Lord Uncle. Then you shall tell no one else. We will explain our suspicions to Naruto when he is older. A child doesn't need to think about that. But it will be up to him to tell the clan or anyone else. Yes, uncle. I kind of wished I didn't know myself. Her mood brightened a moment later. I better go get ready. I am sure grandfather will want to give me hug me once he finds out I am here, so I don't want to cover him in dirt. I will have Naruto lay your clothes outside the door. Homa stopped after a few feet and chuckled. Uncle, you are lucky your house is so big. Why? Because if Naruto is one, you know he will storm off and drag the others back here, kicking and screaming if necessary. Mitsuhide smirked, yeah, he would. Others would take it for the wrong reasons though. He would just want them to be free of the pain he has felt. Koma went into the bathroom and showered. When she stepped out, she was wearing a kimono of the same color as the others. Naruto had to say it. Koma Niasen, you almost look like a lady wearing that. She gave him a pleasant grin. I will hurt you for that later, Naruto. Naruto smiled all the wider behind you. Before she could react, Hidemitsu scooped his granddaughter up in his arms. Got you, young lady. And what were you thinking, wandering off on your own? Grandfather, I wanted my own adventure. I wanted to help find a lord and home too. That is for adults, not ten-year-old girls. He gave her a kiss on the cheek and set her down. I took the liberty to clean them, he said, giving her swords to her. Your spear is in your room. Thank you, grandfather. He rubber her hair, earning a glare as she put it back in place. But the smirk to his cousin, he walked out and breathed in the afternoon air. Dot I love it here with my family. Thank you, Kami, for giving them to me. Kitsumi to top his head. His fur had been combed and thoroughly cleaned for this meeting. Karara walked over and sat down next to Naruto. He was coming along as well as the partner to his father. Kawe. Naruto knew his cousin just found the litter of fox kits. You know, you are going to get too big to stay up there forever. Kitsumi mewed. Yeah, well, make sure not to mess up my hair too much. We have to make a big impression. Kitsu gave a sigh. I don't care that you would rather go play in the dirt. Tonight, we have to be clean and show our friends we aren't always warriors. Karara yawned and Naruto turned to him. Yeah, well who asked you? Betting it down, Mitsuhide asked. Not yet, Naruto replied. There are still gaps, but I can get the gist of what they are saying. After spending so much time with them, Naruto noticed that he started to he understood what they wanted a little better. And that started to turn to words. It was like listening to a person that had trouble pronouncing their S or couldn't smack their lips for P and other things. They also had the tendency to roll their RS. Nothing could remedy it, but time listening to how they said it. It still escaped his father though. Mitsuhide had gotten the first part, a better understanding of what they want. But he was still trying with Naruto's help. Thought you know you are going to be very busy, Mitsuhide told his son. The image of Koma trying to catch and cuddle all those startled and running kits almost broke his bearing. No doubt once she learns that you can talk to them, she will demand you teach her how. Naruto nodded and then glared down to Karara after he made a few pants. I know that she scared the daylights out of them. Dot it isn't my fault she did. Dot well, how could I have known? Mitsuhide shook his head at the display. Son, are they ready to go? They are, father. Dot Karara, under your tail. The fox lifted it and looked under. A kid it hid there was was looking rather sheepish to those that knew how to read their features. Go on back in. The kid yipped. Kitsu is older and my partner. Now go back, I'm sure your mother is worried about where you are with the squealing terror on the loose. The foxes made no attempt to hide their laughter, while Mitsuhide coughed. Naruto, talk nice about your cousin. Yes, father. I'm going to hurt you for that one too, Koma said, walking over with a particularly fuzzy kid in her arms. I see the others got away. Their face dropped at that. They did. The kid in her arms struggled but couldn't get free. 
The look she gave to Mitsuhite and Naruto was one of help me or kill me now and end my misery. Naruto walked over to his cousin and she sensed he was going to take the kid. So she held on all the tighter. Koma, stop, you are acting childish. Just because you decided to grow into an old miser at the age of eight doesn't mean I have to. The beauty of being a child is acting like a child. She cuddled the kid again. Naruto sighed. Then at least hold her so that you aren't hurting her. He readjusted her arms, making no attempt to grab the kid. When he stopped, the kid was lying on her arms and having her ears rubbed. He then growled up to Kitsu. Think I should mention she is shedding. Kitsu shook his head no. Naruto looked at the sun. There is no time to get her ready to come with, Koma, so she has to stay here. No. Koma. Naruto was interrupted by his grandfather. Let her bring her. They already know about the foxes, so I doubt it will cause anything. Naruto nodded to Hitomitsu but still frowned. His grandfather laughed at him for it. He had been working long and hard to make sure everything was just right ever since he learned they were going. He was obviously very nervous. Don't worry, Naruto, nothing we can do about it now. So relax and have fun while you are there. Naruto gave a defeated sigh, hi, grandfather. Welcome, Lord Akechi, the woman that met them at the door said to them, Hitomitsu sama, Naruto kun, we have been expecting you. Oh, who have we here? This is my niece, Akechi Koma. Koma curtsied to her. It is an honor to be welcomed into the Hayuga house. The woman smiled. I see where she has gotten her manners. And are these all the foxes you are bringing? Naruto nodded, shaking Kitsu a little from his perch. They are ma'am. This is Kitsune Karara, Kitsune Kitsu, and Kitsune Faji. They were the ones that chose their family name, and they decided to keep it simple. He reached up and set Kitsu on the ground next to his father. Karara made the display of looking regal to her. But it was almost ruined when Kitsu almost pounced on his twitching tail. I will announce you to Lord Hiashi and the elders then. Please follow me. She took them in, noticing the foxes recognized how important this was. Kitsu was trying to remain as calm as his father. But Naruto knew he was anything but. Kitsu loved attention, to be petted and carried. The complete opposite of Faji. She preferred to walk and get attention in a calming way. Like lying on your chest when you lay down and for you to absentmindedly scratch her ears or smooth her fur out. Maybe he should switch Kitsu with Faji. Before he could think about it more, they were already in the room, bound before those gathered. It is our honor to be accepted into your home, they all said. The Ashi stood up. We welcome you to our home, Akechi clan. Please, come and sit down. The children can't sit with the others. Naruto and Koma headed to the end of the table where Hinata and Bandit, her sister Hanabi, Kiba and Akamaru were. Kitsu followed Karara to the adult side of the table, but realized his mistake quickly and scampered after Naruto's heels, making a few adults chuckle. Good evening, Hinata-chan, Kiba, Bandit, Akamaru. You must be Hinata's sister. Hanabi, is it not? I am, she gave a short reply, looking him up and down. You don't look like much. Because I am not trying, Naruto told her. Everyone, this is my cousin Koma. Hello, she said, all smiles. Woof, came from the direction of Kiba. Naruto glared at him only to realize it was from Akamaru. His cousin laughed at him for it. I don't need you protecting me, Naruto. Now don't forget this little girl. Yes, of course. And this is Faji. The name is well placed, Kiba stated. Nothing but a little fuzzy right there. Another thing Naruto discovered about Faji that night was that she had her pride as well. She slipped from Koma's arms and bit his hand with her baby teeth. She couldn't break skin, but no doubt it still hurt. Ow, 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 ow. Haji, behave yourself, Naruto told her. She nodded to Naruto and gave Kiba an apologetic bow. And ran away. Haji, come back here, Koma, said as she ran after the little blur. Once she was out of sight, two orange ears came up from Hinabi's lap. Naruto grinned as Faji came out of her hiding spot. Kitsune after image, he explained to them. Apparently, foxes are naturals at things like that. At the head of the table, the adults watched the little fox run away, followed closely behind by Koma. And then, even the elders started laughing when Faji revealed herself hiding on Hanabi's lap. That is quite a skill, one of the Hayuga elders said. How long until your niece notices she has been tricked? I don't know, this is the first time she has ever met our foxes, Mitsuhai told them. I apologize for her running around in your home. It was worth the laugh, Hiashi told him. I have something to show you. It took me several weeks to find it, but here it is. He placed an old scroll on the table. This is the original agreement between our clan and yours. The catchy blinked his surprise as he just stared at it. May I see it? At a nod, he unrolled it. It was very informal but covered all the political angels that at the time was necessary. Then he noticed a clause in it that said should ties start to become loose between the two, an inter-clan marriage will take place. Is this still valid? Oh yes, the first elder told him. 
Ah, but there is no such tutu. One of them cast a glance at Naruto. My son is the clan heir. He cannot be married into the high uga, which I am sure you would prefer. And even then, who would he marry? The elders were quiet, the only choices was Hinata and Hanabi. One was too weak, and the other is five years his junior. Point taken, the second elder said with a sigh. The third one snapped his normally droopy eyes wide open. He has a niece, he stated. Yes, my sister's daughter, Koma. Why is this of concern? The Ashi rolled his eyes. Because I have a nephew named Niji, who turned down the invitation to join us this evening. Faji. Faji. Where are you girl? She rounded a corner and bumped into someone a little smaller than herself. I'm sorry. Have you seen a fuzzy fox run through here? Niji stood up and helped her up. I have not. Do I know you? No, but you might know my cousin, Naruto. He is friends with a girl named Hinata. You are an Akechi. I am, she said proudly. Akechi Koma, and you are. Hayuga Niji, Hinata's cousin. A pleasure she said with a smile. Can you help me find her? I am afraid I have no idea where she is or where I am. Niji frowned. I cannot help you find her, but I can lead you back to the dining room. Follow me please. He led her back the way she came and stopped at the door. Here you are, Lady Akechi. Thank you, she said sadly. Opening the door, she said, Naruto, I lost Faji. I already found her, Naruto said, pointed to Hanabi. The three-year-old was scratching her ears and not getting any struggle from the kit. Koma dropped her jaw followed by her head. But she is part of my clan. Don't just grab next time, Naruto told her. He looked to Faji. What do you say, forgive her? Or give her a second chance? The kid moaned before lifting her head and letting Hanabi scratch there. She said maybe, Koma. Your son can understand them, Hiashi asked. More or less, Mitsuhide informed them. It is just emerging in him. And so far, he is the only one that can. Although, with some help, I have grown more emphatic to what they want. Really, it just takes time to understand their accent. And he still doesn't fully. I see, Hiashi said. So this is how bloodlines are birthed. Appears so. He is also the reason the foxes have stayed around and even joined our clan. Koma turned around. Thank you, Niji-san, for showing me the way here. You're welcome, Koma-san. He was about to turn to leave. But was called by Hiashi. He went up to him and said, yes Lord Hayuga. The elders were just talking about you and Koma, Hiashi stated. Niji narrowed his eyes. How so? Part of the alliance agreement was that if our clans become too distant, an arranged marriage can be done to strengthen the bond again. But both sides must agree to this. And you want me and Koma to be married. He assumed he was right. Personally, no, Hiashi replied surprising everyone there. I will not force you into it. I am merely telling the chance to help your clan and leave it up to you. I have a different thought and would actually like to speak with Lord Akechi alone later. The samurai there arched an eyebrow. Thought I would say I see but I don't. You are not going to force me into this. I just said I would not. And neither will the elders. The look he gave them quieted any objections. All I ask is that you give it a thought. Turn it down or accept as you wish. This is your fate to make. Ah, and if I accepted, would I stay Hayuga or would I join the Akechi? Now that is the complicated part, the first elder told him. By tradition, it would be from the lower rank to the higher rank. For example, a low rank samurai could marry a commoner if he wanted, and she would join him. But if he wanted to marry a woman from a higher samurai family, he would join her family. Ah, but we are no longer samurai, Niji stated. Thus the problem, Mitsuhide stated. Ninja are held as assassins by the old traditions, while well it is the samurai that fight honorable combat. But now, the ninja are fighting in the open with samurai for the most part. They are still masters of stealth and skilled assassins, but that isn't all. The line is too vague to say. So the easiest thing to do. The elder was stopped by Hiashi. He was going to say have two marriages, one from both going to the other. Would be to consult the Hokage about this. Unless your plan covers this very thing, Hiashi. It does. Now, Niji, I have asked of you what I wanted so I have nothing else for you. Unless you would like to say something. He did in fact. That if he agreed, he wanted to join the Akechi. Nothing, uncle. Then you can go if you wish. Or go and talk to the other children. Niji bowed and walked down to the end of the table. They were eating dessert. With Hanabi laughing at Faji suddenly being in a playful mood and batting her hands as she ate her watermelon. Naruto, he said with a nod as he sat down. Niji-san, it is good to see you in good health. Training going well. As expected. He cut a slice from the watermelon and put it on his plate. How about we go outside to eat? It is a nice night. I don't mind, Naruto said. Koma. Sounds good, I love the night air. Anata-chan. Why yes, Naruto-kun. I w old like to as well. 
she was still forcing herself not to stutter, but it was still an improvement. Can I carry Faji, Hanabi asked. Naruto smiled as he picked up her plate for her. Kiba, what about you? It sounds better than just staying here. As they walked out, Soon walked in. Again, I apologize, Hiashi, I was busy with an important clan matter. It is quite alright, Hiashi told her. Before grinning. How many pups were there? Seven. How did you know that was what it was? Kiba was very excited, as well as his dog Akimaru. Hinata made the comment that he was only this excited whenever more pups were born. Both Akechi still inside stood as she entered. In Yuzukatsum, I am Akechi Mitsuhide, and this is my father, Akechi Hitamitsu. It is a great honor to meet the mother of one of my son's closest friends. The honor is mine, Lord Akechi. Your son has definitely made my son want to strive more. Rivalry often does in my clan. They were eating when Kiba's ears perked. Do you hear that? Hear what, Niji asked. That sounded like a scream. Naruto sniffed and wrinkled his nose. No, but I do smell blood. Where did it come from, Kiba? He pointed to the wall. Naruto set down his his watermelon and ran to the wall. He jumped, kicked his foot against it, the tree at the spot he jumped at, and grabbed a branch. When he climbed atop it, he looked at the source. Oh my god. This time, he saw the person screaming. It was a woman as she was cut down by a man wearing anbu armor with one of their swords. He was about to shout for them to get their parents, but this woman holding a baby was his next target. Naruto jumped down and ran as fast as he could. The Anbu did not expect it, so he was stunned when his sword was stopped by another. I will not let you do that, Naruto growled. Out of my way, the man said, impassively. This does not concern you. It does, Naruto replied. I have the power to stop her from dying so I must do just that. If I didn't, I would have to kill myself for it. Bushido demands it. I see now, you are the samurai that is always beating my brother. The Ichiha grinned. He really dislikes you. And your efforts are really just for waste. She will die and there is no one else to save. They, myself, and my brother are the last Ichiha. Up at the wall, Niji climbed the tree and saw the exchange. Get our parents. Someone is killing the Ichiha. Itachi frowned and pushed Naruto back. You have cost me time. Time that is precious and can never be made up. Out of my way boy. Naruto just kept his sword across his chest. But they both saw it was shaking. Naruto was afraid. No, he was terrified. The Ichiha was. Were the best. And he had killed all of them about. There was only two options for him. Run and survive. Or fight and die. And he didn't want to die. Please, the woman said to them, don't do this Itachi. Don't kill my daughter. The samurai can never fail in his mission, Naruto his father's voice said in his head. Even if we die, if it is to complete the mission, then we still complete it. Naruto stopped shaking. I can't fail, he muttered. He slashed his sword down and then returned it to the Saya. Behind him, the woman was afraid he was going to leave her. But Naruto crouched down, his right foot ahead and right hand over the hilt of the fox fang. Even if I die, if they live for five more minutes, then my life will have meaning. That Ijutsu, Itachi said, recognizing the stance. He considered this new information. If he was off by a fraction of an instant, he would be cut in half. And no doubt help is coming even then. You win this one, Akechi. The woman and child will live and so will you. Sheathing his own sword, he turned and vanished. Naruto didn't move, refusing to believe he would leave just like that. A hand fell on his shoulder and the woman said, in a voice still shaking from her fear, Thank you. Thank you so very much, Akechi-sama. The footstep was heard behind him and he spun to cut down this person. But his sword was blocked by Hello Edge, his father's sword. Job well done, my son. He is gone. Naruto let out the breath he had been holding, as well as the fear he had forced back. Dad. He grabbed his father's waist, shaking so much he was ashamed of himself. But he couldn't stop. It is okay, you truly forced him to leave. It is okay now thanks to you. He hands rested on his back while his son sobbed. Are you okay? Ichihiriko. And I am fine thanks to you son, Lord Akechi. Both my daughter and I are. But my husband. Tears started to fall as she looked down the street at the bodies that were everywhere. Soon, we have to try and stop him, Hiashi said to the head of the Inuzuka clan. Lead the way. The two jumped off, following the scent Itachi left behind. Who did this, Naruto, Hitomitsu asked kindly. He knew the woman couldn't answer as she tried to stop her tears and the child's. He. He was. Ichiha Itachi. The two swallowed the lump in their throat. Even living outside the village, they had heard stories about his skill. Naruto was truly lucky to be alive. And. And he said only himself. Yuriko, her daughter Dot and Sasuke were still alive. Even the children. Itomitsu turned back to Yuriko. Dear lady, let us get you away from here. You have been through so much this evening. 
He took her by her arm and carried her to the Hyuga grounds. Adi was going to kill me, father. Just like all of them, I was going to die. Hush, Naruto, it is over. Ah uh, no, I can't. I almost ran. I wanted to so much. But I heard her say please don't do this and I couldn't. But I still wanted to. Homa up on the wall swallowed as she heard that. It must have taken a lot to admit it. Ah uh, Naruto, do you believe I have never felt the same, Mitsuhide asked. Naruto couldn't answer. My first battle was even worse than this was for you. I came against a Jinchuriki, a boy from Suna that held the one-tailed Shukaku inside his body and controlled all the sand of the desert. I wanted to run as I saw my comrades die around me. But my father's words rung in my ears and I stayed. Do you know the reason I am here today? Because he withdrew. Not because of what I did but because those strong enough to kill him were coming while he was trying to deal with me. Not because I was stronger, quicker, more powerful. But he did not win and I can still look at myself in the mirror. Naruto couldn't even imagine his father afraid. Nothing scared him. And I still get afraid, Mitsuhide told him. When I heard you were fighting for your life against an Anbu, I thought I was going to lose you. It was that fear that drove me to get here even faster. Naruto was shocked. He was also growing colder. Father. I don't feel well. He started to fall, and the fox fang slipped from his grasp. When Itachi had pushed him back, he had slashed his shoulder. And even cut his collarbone in half. The last thing he saw was his father shouting, but he couldn't hear what. Naruto opened his eyes and found he was staring at a white tiled ceiling. Where am I? Naruto. Koma jumped on him and he groaned in pain. I am so glad you are awake. The medics used a jutsu to mend your bone and flesh back together and said you would be fine in a few hours, but we could barely believe them. You were so pale. I am going to get uncle. Grandfather forced to go sit down and get some sleep. She ran from the room. Before the door even closed all the way, his friends burst in. Naruto. You're alive, Kibo about shouted. Man, I never would have believed it. You fraud at Itachi and came out with only a scar on your shoulder. I was so worried, and Naruto-san, Hinata said, on the verge of tears. Don't cry, Naruto told her. Even as he did, he realized how weak his voice sounded. I'm fine, nothing a bowl of ramen and a plate of dango won't cure. He gave them a wry grin as he said that. Kibo smiled. I think we can get some for you. I will wake up Ichiruka and nothing but dango if I have to, Mitsuhide said as he ran in. How do you feel? Naruto swallowed. My throat is dry and my shoulder hurts. Otherwise I am fine. Where are my swords? I think I dropped Fox Fang. Anada rushed out of the room and back in. I had been holding th them myself, Naruto-san. No one else has touched them. Thank you, Hinata-chan. He yawned and found he could barely keep his eyes open. And Yuriko. She is in shock but will come out of it. She is still afraid though. Should we let her stay with us for now then? Mitsuhide nodded. I will see to it that she can. Naruto, someone else is here to see you. He opened the door and beaconed the person in. It was Ichiha Sasuke. His eyes met Naruto's and he looked down. Go on son, Mitsuhide said to him. Ah thank you Naruto. Because of you, I still have everything I have left in the world. I I am sorry. You almost lost your arm because of my clan and I. He couldn't go on. He had been spared the sight of seeing his family dead. But the Chunin couldn't stop him from seeing the rest of them. He dropped his head. His own brother had killed almost all he cared for while the person he had thought an enemy saved all he had left in the world. He felt a hand grab his and saw it was Naruto. As Kiba once told me, I will tell you. No worries, mate. That was all he had left in him. He dropped his hand back to his side, closed his eyes and fell back to sleep. Adi doesn't even hate me for it. I would hate me, Sasuke said. Naruto has seen and felt hate, Mitsuhide told him. He has seen and felt enough. He was injured for his choices so he doesn't blame you. Alright, let's go and let him rest. Hinata-sama, please hold on to his swords for now. Hi, Lord Akechi. Even though Naruto was told he should rest, he was back at the academy the next day, his arm in a sling. Naruto-kun. His eyes went wide when he heard that. If there was nothing else, Naruto had one thing in common with Sasuke. The dreaded creature known as the fangirl. And several were running at him now. What happened, Naruto-kun? Do you need help? It was Sasuke, wasn't it? There was an attack and I was injured forcing the person to retreat. No, it wasn't Sasuke. But do you need help, they all about yelled. Naruto was looking for a way out of this. He couldn't lie. But he couldn't tell them he did either. He saw his salvation in the form of an indigo-haired girl carrying two swords close to her heart. Pardon me, ladies, I have to go retrieve my Daisho Hinata-chan. He pushed his way through, grabbed Hinata's hand, and ran into the building. Why the hell does she get to hold his swords? Inside, he was able to hide from them. We lost them. Thank you, Hinata-chan. 
for caring for my swords and for your impeccable timing. He looked at her and saw her face beat red. She was looking at her hand. Which he was still holding. Ah heh. Sorry about that. He was about to reach for the fox fang and claw, but remembered the sling. Uh. Can you help me put them in my belt? She just nodded, her face still red. As he pulled on his belt, she slid them into place. Thank you. You're welcome, Naruto-kun, she said in little more than a whisper. Naruto and Hinata walked into class and took their seat. Kiba was waiting for them. And so was Sasuke. Here, he said, holding out a big scroll. He almost smacked his head when he noticed the sling. He gave it to Kiba instead. It is a contract of some kind. I don't understand what it means, but I know the Kabuto is a helmet. So you can have it. No one in my clan used it anyway. Thanks, Naruto said to him. He didn't say that he didn't have to. No doubt his pride was hurt enough as is. Iruka raised his hand and tried to quiet them done. Students. Shut up. That last part was from his sign less big head no jutsu. Now, Naruto, Sasuke, I have been told what happened, so you both will not have to train. But if you want to, I will help you. Naruto, it is strongly suggested you don't train today. Hi, Iruka-sensei. Now, for today's lesson we will be continuing learning how to draw out your chakra. While the other students went about the lesson, Naruto could do nothing but read. So he decided to take a look inside the scroll. But it wasn't a scroll with instructions to some great technique. Just a scroll full of blocks, and the first seven had been signed by a person in blood with the bottom holding a handprint. The blood on the latest signature had turned black with age. Meaning that no one had signed it in quite some time. Dado to Nobunaga. Naruto said as he read the first name. And it was one that he knew well. Nobunaga nearly concurred all of the land. But when he died, it was divided up into the countries that existed today. A thousand years ago. He studied it for another five minutes before his thumb pushed the fox claw a bit from its eye. He slid his thumb along the blade, cutting it and drawing blood. He took a cloth between his fore and middle finger and cleaned it off before returning it. With his thumb as the pen, he wrote Akechi Naruto in the first open slot, along with the Akechi symbol. He then wrapped his fist around his thumb and squeezed. When it pulled in his palm, he spread it to cover his hand, and he pressed it to the paper on the bottom. He didn't know what this was, but he would sign it as Sasuke did give it to him. And if it was important enough for Nobunaga to sign it, then he would as well. Even if he never used it. Rolling it back up, he loosened the sling on it and put it around his back. Dot you know, sensei, some of the best kenjutsu fighters use their left hand as well to give them the advantage. Maybe it wouldn't hurt if I did a few dances with my left. He said it hopefully. Hmm. That is a valid point, Naruto. Fine, I will allow you time to do so. Naruto nearly cheered in victory. After you have fully healed. He hung his head. Damn. Before any of them realized it, the time to graduate had already arrived. Naruto and Sasuke were running neck and neck to be rookie of the year. They both still hated each other, but only in a rivalry sense. Naruto held close combat, in all its forms, as the top student as well as distance. But Sasuke had ninjutsu and chakra usage. So while Naruto had more, Sasuke held the more important. And concerning hating each other, it was hard to hate someone that lived with you. Alright Naruto, Sasuke, perform the bunch in no jutsu and make as many as you can, Iruka said to them. You two literally have the same score, so this is what was decided to decide it. Naruto hung his head. Damn. Bunshin no jutsu. He made 12 perfect, but the 13th was miserable. Sasuke just smirked before easily creating 20. Sorry, Naruto, looks like you are number 2 student. But think of it like this. Because you two are right next to each other, you will not be placed on the same team. They both looked interested at this. Why not? We try to balance the teams by rank. If we can, and that is not to say we don't try, we put the rookie of the year with both the exact middle student as well as the student that almost didn't pass. But. Naruto sighed. I was hoping to get teamed up with Kiba. Iruka laughed. He wasn't dead last, Naruto. Close, but not dead last. His skills in ninjutsu saved him from that. But I can't say for sure yet that is in fact who you will be teamed up with. Sasuke, this is your headband. Sasuke went up and took it before leaving the room. Naruto watched him before looking to Iruka. What about me, Iruka sensei He smiled. You have a special one, Naruto. A gift from both myself and the Hokage. He reached under his desk and put a box on it. Congratulations, graduate. Naruto opened it and found he was looking at a metal dome. Lifting it out, it turned out to be a Kabuto helmet. On the inside were straps that could be tightened so that he would only have to loosen it as he grew. On the rim above his eyes was the leaf symbol. The metal was very sound and without flaw. That once belonged to the Hokage, but he thought you would want it. Saratobi had even had it changed from black to dark blue to match his armor. It is beautiful, Naruto said. 
Swallowing the lump in his throat, he put the helmet on. The straps were loose and he was about to take it off to tighten them. Dandle chakra into it, Iruka told him. Following his orders, he focused his chakra to his head, and the straps began to move until Naruto stopped. It fit perfectly now. Dot I don't know what to say. Then say the words inscribed on the inside. Taking it back off, Naruto ratted aloud. All the ninja of the hidden village of Konoha have a will of fire. A strong will to protect Konoha. As long as they have that will of fire, everyone in this village is family. Saratobi, the third Hokage. He looked around and saw another one. Dot to abandon your duty is not courageous. Below the courageous, there is nothing. Namak is Minato, fourth Hokage. He wanted to make sure that you knew those. Now go on, I am sure there is a whole clan outside waiting for you. And here. Iruka gave him a normal headband. For when you can't wear the helmet. Naruto nodded his thanks and tied the spare around his waist and armor. He walked out and smiled as Kiba ran up to him. The two clapped their hands together. Looks like we made it, Kiba said. Akamaru poked his head out of his coat and growled. Looks like, Naruto replied. Sasuke announced it. Announce what, Hinata asked, still a little shy after four years. But she no longer stuttered. Yes he didn't. Naruto cleared his throat, catching the attention of the whole room. To Uchiha Sasuke team. The brat finally beat me at something. He is this year's rookie of the year. Sasuke scoffed. I could have beaten you whenever I wanted. Right, right, Kiba said before sneezing. Sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. Sasuke gave him a fake glare before turning it on Naruto. That is it, outside, right now. We'll finish this. Sakura and Ino looked at each other and nodded. This is going to be epic, they said. They came very close during the second year of ending their friendship because of Sasuke and Naruto. But they decided that whichever one got Sasuke or Naruto, the other one could have the remaining one. Outside, Sasuke drew his kunai. While Naruto watched him carefully before he sat down on his knees. Everyone was wondering why except Sasuke and the watching Akechi clan. Sasuke ran forward. There was a click and Naruto was now standing, the fox claw drawn and the kunai cut in half. The sitting badajutsu strike was hard, but Naruto had been practicing on it for a year now. Naruto pushed forward, using his free hand to wrap around Sasuke's head and. He put Sasuke into a nuggie. Say it. Never. Naruto just rubbed harder. Say it. No. You're messing up my hair. Say it. Fine. You are the better swordsman. Naruto just laughed and let him go. And don't you forget it. All the other students wet dropped at that. When they said finish this, they were expecting something along the lines of Jutsus and a battle to the death. The two glared at each other before they cracked and started to laugh. Naruto clapped him on the back. Nah, you deserve the title rookie of the year. Sasuke tapped his knuckles to Naruto's helmet. Before smiling and hitting it harder, making it ring. Dope. Ah. He took in a deep breath and looked at the trees. Well, what are you waiting for? Mitsuhide stepped out from behind it and walked up to his son. Just waiting for the moment to pass. Congratulations son. Oh. Lord Akechi is as handsome as every one of the girls in backside. Making Naruto roll his eyes. He looked down at his side and saw Kitsu had done the same. Then the rest of the clan mobbed him saying how proud they were. He had aunts, uncles, a few cousins, as well as Yuriko with her daughter Shiruku. But someone was missing. His helmet was taken off and someone bopped him on the head. Just because you are a ninja now, Naruto-kun, don't think you can beat me, Koma challenged. I don't think, Nisan, I know, Naruto said with a grin. Father, do you know where I got this from? Mitsuhide leaned in close. It is a gift from the Hokage. He nodded. Then make sure his support is not misplaced. He straightened and turned to Sasuke. Congratulations, Sasuke. You are deserving of that title. Let's go home. Dot Naruto looked behind him and saw the box. Would you like to handle them or should I, he asked Sasuke. You do it. Naruto nodded before jumping up into the air and landed behind the box. He put his mouth close to the eye holes and shouted. Hey. Does something seem odd with this rock? Sasuke looked at him then at. Nope. I see square rocks all the time with holes in them. Are you sure I swear I smell something akin to brats? Naruto swore he could see the box sweating. I am certain there is nothing odd about that rock. Hitsu hopped off Naruto's shoulder and started sniffing at the holes. Naruto heard a voice say, shoo, shoo. Go away. See, even Kitsu smells something here. Naruto, it is just a rock. Sasu could barely keep from laughing. Konohamaru did a really bad job this time. Yudin and Moki at least had no experience being a ninja. You know, Sasuke, my legs are kind of tired. Maybe I should sit down for a bit. And this rock seems the perfect spot too. That sweat was pouring down now. A whisper came from inside followed by a snicker. Shrugging, Naruto turned around and lightly sat on it, almost all his weight still on his legs. 
He jumped up, gripping his butt when he felt a kunai poke him there. Amante de Doya. Carrera Pizuri Sasarera Mai Ketsunona. He cursed in two different languages for that. As he hopped around, he made everyone around him laugh. Before he turned a glare that promised death to the three inside the box. That sweat returned as a waterfall. They abandoned the box and started running. He was about to run after them, but someone grabbed the back of his collar. Let me hurt them, please. Let me hurt them. Now, Naruto, Yuriko said to him. You can't do that to your lord's grandson. He would understand. It was all in good fun to terrorize them, he honestly didn't mean it that much. Dot ah, I'll get them later. Konohimaru blew a raspberry at him as he turned around. Then again, now does seem good. They ran off, laughing at him. Naruto, I have some important news for you, my son, Mitsuhide said to him that evening in the study. His home was really crowded now with a total of 12 families living there. But that was why he had it built very large and with several other houses. What is it, father? It concerns you and Hayuga Hinata. Naruto tilted his head as he wondered what it could be. You remember that night at the Hayuga mansion? He nodded. He ashy said he had a plan he wanted to tell me in secret. Well, it turned out to be a good one. He proposed to have an arranged marriage between you and Hinata and have Hanabi become the next clan heir for the Hayuga. Naruto smiled at that prospect. He did care for Hinata. That is great news, father. I can't wait until I tell Hinata. You can't, son. This is to be done in secret. It will be publicly announced six months before your wedding. And that is when she will find out. But why tell me? An old tradition. The men know so that they can get them to fall in love with them before that they turn 16. As they and you are ninja, if you become Chunin before then, you will start the six month time then. God I see father. I will do it. I know you will, Mitsuhide said with a smile. And not just because Naruto had an easy job to get her to fall in love with him. Anada, he ashi called her into his study. I have important news for you, my daughter. Yes father. You are no longer to be considered clan heir, Hinata. I have decided that Hanabi is and you are to be put in an arranged marriage. Hinata looked heartbroken. Yes father. At least hear me out who it is that you are marrying. You actually know him. Ah father, the only person that I would care to marry is Akechi Naruto. I see. Well, it is a good thing that happens to be who you are engaged with. Hanada threw away her Hayuga bearing and jumped on her father, giving him a hug. Thank you, father. You are welcome Hinata. Now there are some stipulations you need to know. She got down and stood in attention. Hi. First off, he does not know and is not to know. Second, he will be told only when he turns 16 or you both become Chunin. Once he has been told, six months later, you are to be married. Now, you are to use this time to get him to fall in love with you, Hinata. There will be nothing beyond holding hands, understood. Once I say otherwise, you may allow him to kiss you, but not until then. But, of course, that depends on if you can get close to him. Hi, father. She went to her room and he ashy chuckled. Right about now, Mitsuhide was telling his son much the same thing. With a smile, he leaned back in his chair and relaxed. The elders would be more than happy with this. So they would stay off his back and he can focus on Niji now. If only he knew what his answer to the question was. Peace, tranquility, calm, when you think of these, normally you would think of a garden. Or even the home of samurai. Too bad that home was not the one where Naruto lived. Several foxes jumped on him to wake him up. He grabbed the first one he could and scowled at it as he held it up in front of him. Name one reason I shouldn't throw you across the room. I'm cute, the kid told him confidently. Normally, this statement would mean nothing. But to an Akechi, it meant Koma adored the little guy. And to hurt the fox she adored was just a death wish. Not low, Mina, very low. He didn't throw her across the room. He rolled her out his door and shut it behind her. The kid squeaked as a pair of legs walked by her. Good morning, Hidemitsu said as he patted the girl. Didn't go so well, eh? The kid rolled back to her paws and nodded. Well, remember, he is ticklish. He slid the door open a little, just enough for the kids to get back in. And walked away. Under his knees, on his stomach, and the bottom of his feet. Mina ran in along with her siblings. Not 30 seconds later, Hidemitsu heard his grandson laugher, trying to throw off his attackers, and finally begging for mercy. Good morning, son, he said when he sat down at the table with Mitsuhide. As usual, by his side was Karara. Seems that somehow, they had followed after the Inuzuka dogs, living for a much longer life than normal and growing far larger than normal. Karara was twice his adult size and still growing now. Morning. The kids having fun. They are. I guess they decided Naruto has slept long enough. Naruto glared at his grandfather and looked at the kids he now held. Sick him. Simple curl up his shirt, go for the armpits and the stomach. His grandfather was soon begging for mercy from the furballs as well. No, peace, tranquility, calm does not describe this home. 
Saratobi looked at the list of Jonin and then at the teams. Teammate was the one he was having trouble with. All three had one skill that was very powerful, thanks to one of the three, but only one clan knew how to teach it. And the Inuzuka had no Jonin on the list. Then there was the fact that they all also knew the basics of sword combat, thanks to another member. Deku Hate would be good for them to improve more. Finally, there was the last member. She shows great promise with Injutsu, while the other two needed great help with it. Naturally, Yuuhi Kurenai would also be of great help to this team. Team 7 had been easy. Sasuke, Sakura and Ino went to Kakashi. Sasuke because he needs training with the Sherigan. Sakura because even though she turned out a good student, she need to be able to fight without Ino. When together, those two were just dangerous. But alone, they weren't sure how to fight. Kakashi will change that. Finally was Ino. A natural leader when the shit hits the fan. Sasuke would be thought to be but he had seen for himself. Sasuke preferred to rely on his own strength, but Ino knew to look to herself and others. She also knew power, unusual for her clan. But she learned early in her friendship with Sakura that she was better at carrying out the plans than coming up with them. She actually knew a powerful ninjutsu besides her family jutsu. Bakashi could help her use her head more, and that was all she needed. Those two really were the strongest Kanoichi duo. Together, none of the students could beat them. Not even Sasuke or Naruto. Theme 10 was also easy. Shino, Shikamaru, and Choji went to his son Asuma. Shikamaru's and Choji's fathers had actually tried to get their kids on the same team with Ino, but Aruka had told him that Team 7 and Team 10 would work better like this. Aruka swore up and down that Shikamaru was smart but lacked the motivation to actually apply himself. He also swore he wished he befriended Naruto as well when he first came. Maybe then he would have some initiative. Hopefully, Saratobi's son could break him of his laziness. Dot but seeing as how that is almost a keke genkai for that clan, it is unlikely. Doji was Shikamaru's best friend, fulfilling the same role as Ino with Sakura. Though they didn't talk at the same time. Supposedly, Shikamaru would come up with a plan, and he and Choji would carry it out. Seemed natural that they are together. Finally Ishino. He had an analytical like all his clan that gave him a better view of the whole picture. No doubt, if he was given Kakashi's test, he would see right through it from the start. But teammate. He looked up at the still the still waiting Jonin. Hey, Kurenai can stay. Everyone else, you have your assigned duties. When it was just the two, Saratobi continued. You both are being considered at the Jonin Sensei for Team 8, Akechi Naruto, Inuzuka Kiba, and Hayuga Hinata. Naruto has shown the other two basic swordsmanship. Kiba has taught the other two how to best use their partners in combat. And Hinata has skills they lack in Jinjutsu. It is that first and third that I am have decided it should be one of you two. But I want to know from you which of you would be best for these three. They were silent for a moment. Hayate saw the raw potential still left in Naruto with his swords. He may be learning the bad Ajutsu style, but he hasn't even scratched the surface. He would probably be even better than himself. And if the other two are willing to learn how to fight Kinjutsu, then he would do his damn best to teach them everything they could learn. He didn't even realize he said that aloud. Saratobi nodded at him and looked to Kurenai. She also wanted this team. Kiba is hot-headed and needs self-control. Hinata has little self-confidence. She is much better than when she started the academy but still lacking for a ninja. I know I can teach them both. And Naruto. He has a strict code of honor that will no doubt get in the way. I know he will not abandon it, but I plan to show him how to get around it. I haven't been studying up on it for nothing. You have wanted this team for a while, haven't you? Since mid-third year when it became apparent that they would be teamed together, Kurenai told him. Saratobi took a deep pull from his pipe and held it. One promises skills in a near-forgotten, but still essential, art. The other promised control over their emotions. Either way, teammate would no doubt become a hunter in team. With Naruto and Kiba able to track through sense and Hinata able to see anything around her, it was almost predestined. But which would get them there better? He wished he didn't have to decide and. Saratobi chuckled, finally letting the smoke from his lungs. I have decided. I decided I won't choose. I am making you both co-leaders of Team 7. Kurenai, you will be teaching them emotional control in Jinjutsu. Hey, you will be teaching them Kinjutsu. They stared at him blankly. Cough. Has that ever. Cough. Been done before. Yes. Last time it was done was by the second. But if the situation calls for it, I am allowed to assign such a team. I believe that for the betterment of their development, it is called for. And hey, stop that coughing, I know you do it to make people think you are weaker than you are. He straightened up. Hi, Hokage-sama. Now, might I suggest you two use Kakashi's bell test. One on each of you. After all, you will be fighting six instead of three. Thought they are already that far along in the Inuzuka Jutsu, Kurenai asked. Kiba is naturally farther, but the other two are close behind. 
Good luck trying to tell which is which. Only they can. The two Jonin nodded to each other and walked out. Saratobi chuckled, he would have to watch this test. It promises to be interesting. No. 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 Naruto was shifting through his cloths, looking for something good to wear. Hinata had called him and asked if he wanted to get lunch. Of course he did. But he only had his armor and his ceremonial robes. He should have asked what she was wearing. He finally settled on a blue and black version of his normal attire. This one was more for combat ceremony with how polished it was. He set his helmet on his head and ran from his room, scooping Kitsu up as he went. Bye father, I shall return this evening. Naruto set the adult-size fox on the ground and kept running until he reached Konoha. He flashed his passport as he entered the gate. Finally, he came to the gate of the Hayuga compound and entered. I am to meet with Hayuga Hinata, he explained to the guards. They nodded. She informed us you would be coming, Naruto-san, the one on the right told him. We have instructions from Lord Hiashi to remind you of the tradition not to tell her, the one on the left said. I will not, he told them. With a nod, they allowed him to pass. Naruto was shown to the waiting room where Hiashi was waiting. Occupying his time. Cleaning a sword. That had a wicked edge on it and had been used before. The name on the blade said the suitor's end. And then Hiashi turned this evil smile on him. Come on and boy, sit on down. So you like my daughter, do you now? We really think she's something else. She my little girl, her mother's world before she passed away. She deserves respect and that what she'll get, ain't it son? Now you two just run along and have some fun. I'll see you when you get back. Bet'll be up all night, just cleaning the sword. Naruto only tore his eyes from the blood-stained sword when it was announced Hinata was there. Hinata came into the room. She was wearing a silk kimono with her headband around her neck like a choker. Her kimono was sky blue over her chest and grass green from her hips down, making it look like a field. Sakura petals dotted over her left shoulder. Naruto immediately felt underdressed. He bowed and said, Hinata-chan, I apologize. I didn't think this would be a formal occasion. Hinata blushed as she replied. No, Naruto-kun, I should have told you. But you look very nice as you are. And you look beautiful, Naruto replied. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Of course it would be something formal. You should have worn the Hakama. I really don't. You do, Naruto insisted. When have I ever lied? And never. Hinata-chan, you are beautiful. Even the most perfect sakura blossom to the rarest dessert rose would pale in comparison. Akechi sama Hiashi said behind his daughter. Are you trying to make my daughter blush until she faints? Or possibly fall in love with you? He had stopped straightening the edge and was now standing, facing him. A father? He looked at her, shocked. I am simply asking a question out of concern for you health, Hinata. If you fell and hurt yourself, I would be rather upset. Hinata wrapped her arm around Naruto's and dragged him off before she could be further embarrassed. He ashy waited until they were gone from the grounds before sitting back down and laughing. He glanced at the blood-stained blade and laughed. A special coloring during the crafting and look at the results. This was one of the most used Hyuga tradition. But nothing compared to the Akechi version of the same tradition. He thought they actually had torture implements being examined. Briefly, Hiashi remembered when he had been first introduced to the suitor's end, the same way Naruto had just been. They ate at a fancy restaurant and were now walking through the park. Ah no. They both said as they looked at each other. You first, Hinata-chan. No, you can go ahead, Naruto-kun. Eh? Who do you think our sensei will be? Someone we know. Hinata sighed, she had been hoping for real conversation. But Naruto was nothing if not duty-bound. I do not think we will know them, Naruto-kun. It would seem very unlikely. There are so many jonin and so few students. Hokage-sama has other things to do than put a jonin we are comfortable with as our team leader. Odd I was wondering, Naruto-kun, do you have normal cloths? Normal? He tilted his head. He did have them once but that was so long ago. What had he worn when he was a kid? He only remembered always carrying his swords and wearing his armor. He knew that he was from Konoha, originally but no longer remembered it. Like. What Kiba and I wore to class. Just pants, a shirt, and a coat if necessary. What everyone else would wear to class, Naruto-kun. Naruto had a blank look on his face. He had just gone through his clothes and knew he had no such items. Hinata guesses much from his lack of answering. You should buy some, Naruto-kun. Dot so you could blend in easier when one missions. Both sighed as they had said something they in fact didn't mean to say. I will try to find some, Hinata-chan. He sighed again. They still had four hours. He lifted his head and looked at Hinata, inspiration suddenly hitting him. Can you help me choose them, Hinata-chan? Why why hi, Naruto-san. Naruto smiled before offering her his arm and about to take a step. Dot you don't know where a clothing store is, do you? She giggled when he shook his head. She then turned him around and started walking to the market. 
Naruto liked what Hinata had chosen out for him. He wore denim pants, black combat boots, a white collar shirt, a dark blue long coat, and a black leather belt that had a piece on it to hold his swords. How do I look, Hinata-chan? Is this good enough for our next date? He slapped his hands over his mouth. He had meant earlier to ask if she wanted to go on another with him. A another date with Naruto-kun, she asked in barely a whisper. That was also the subject of what she meant to ask. Normal clothes for the next time they went out. Uh. A samurai must not hesitate. To hesitate is to die. Too bad the person that made the code of Bushido did not also make it usable with women. Isn't that what we are on? I just thought that we would go on one again. If I overstepped. No. I mean, you did not, Naruto-san. I would be happy to go on another. Date with you. And, personally, I like your armor. It must be heavy yet you move so effortlessly in it. And you are able to hide just as well. Dot and I know you feel uncomfortable without it. But it doesn't blend in with others. Dot isn't that what we have the henge no jutsu for? Naruto nodded. That is, isn't it? Well, if you like it, Hinata-chan, I will keep wearing my armor. He went back in the changing room and put his armor back on. He carefully folded his clothing and took them to the register. They were paid for and he took the bag in hand. Shall we go, Hinata Haim? She smiled and they walked out the store. It was silent as they walked. So, where is Bandit? Hinata resisted giggling as she reaching into the bow her belt was tied into on her side. She pulled out the sleep ferret. She had insisted to come with me. Wouldn't stop that huffing that you told me meant she wanted something and was agitated. But she lacked the interest to stay awake. Naruto rubbed a finger under the ferret's chin. Hitsu moaned, feeling left out so Hinata crouched down and rubbed his ears. Naruto smiled at her and looked around. Ahead of them, he saw two jonin meet. One was Asuma, Konohamaru's uncle. The other was a Kanoichi he didn't know. She had pale skin, black hair and red eyes. The chain smoker smiled and presented her with white rose with red highlights. Almost making Naruto slap his forehead. He had compared Hinata to a rose, but he didn't even have one to give her. He began to panic but took a deep breath and relaxed. He simply had to think, plan, and react. He simply looked around and smiled. Not ten feet away was a cherry tree, sakura petals in full bloom. He walked over, took out his tanto, cut off a three-inch branch, then proceeded to cut the excess sticks and flowers from it until it resembled a hairpin with three flowers on it. Naruto sheathed the knife and hid the hairpin as he turned around. Hinata was looking at him questionably. Hinata-chan, close your eyes a moment, please. She hesitated before she did. She peeped for only an instant before covering her eyes with her hand. Naruto walked over and slipped it in place. Dot I think that looks good on you, Hinata-chan. Hinata opened her eyes and felt the silky smooth flowers in her hair. She wanted to see it so badly, but there was no mirror. She didn't even have a makeup kit to look with. But what truly mattered to her was that Naruto had shaped it and gave it to her. Thank you, Naruto-kun. If either had thought about it, they would have realized right then that it would not be very hard to get the other to love them. They were already well on their way. Dot Team 7 is Ichiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Yamanaka Ino with Hata Kakashi. Team 8 is Akechi Naruto, Hayuga Hinata, and Inuzuka Kiba, your Jonin Sensei is to be announced. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10 is Aburam Shino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Choji with Suratobi Asuma. Of all of them, Team 10 was the just barely more satisfied with the team arrangement. Only because Team 8 didn't know who their Sensei is. Shino felt nothing. Choji was glad he was with Shikamaru. And Shikamaru was happy that he was with Choji and grateful to Kami that it was Shino instead of Ino. Did he ever thank Kami for that? Well Team 7's Ino and Sakura nearly squealed at both being on the same team as Sasuke, he was less than thrilled. They may be the strongest pair in class and nearly unstoppable, but they were still fangirls. Less annoying fangirls but fangirls nonetheless. Alright, as you know your placements, you are dismissed until noon. The students all got up and ran out, except Team 7, Sasuke didn't run so the other two wouldn't, Team 10 was either too laid back, lazy, or controlled, and Team 8 was wondering why they didn't have a sensei. Soon only the three teams were left. About a half hour after noon, Asuma came in. Naruto. Asuma-san. How is Hokage-sama? You know the old man. Too stubborn to admit some things and call it quits. Let's face it. That paperwork is going to kill him before he kills it. Naruto nodded. Too true. Well, good luck with your team. Asuma turned to Team 10. Nara, Akamichi, Aburam, follow me. He turned and headed to the door. To find another Jonin walking. Hello Kurinai. He whispered chant to her but was still heard by Naruto and Kiba. Asuma-san, she gave him a curt cold nod. Ouch Kiba said. That train has crashed, call off the rescue, no survivors. Looks like you will have to try harder than to get her affections, Asuma-san, Naruto said. It wasn't a jibe like Kiba. It was simply a statement. 
He frowned. I guess so. He walked out and Team 10 followed. The mate, you are to follow me to be introduced to your instructor. She left and they shrugged before following. She took them to the top of the Hokage Tower to the waiting Haid. She stood beside him, facing them. We are your instructors, Haid told them. Your team could not be assigned a single instructor to teach you in all your strengths. His hand gripped his sword, and all three students became self-conscious of theirs. Naruto had gotten each a sword for their first birthday together. Anada had a ninja too hidden under her coat. Kiba made no attempts to hide his. He couldn't. He had gotten twin, narrow scimitars. He had them crossed at his lower back where his hands could grab the hilts in short notice. He proven his clan's jutsu, the Gatsuuga, was even more dangerous with the blades turning it more into a drill. Obviously, I am talented with kinjutsu, Hei told them. I am the foremost expert with it. Personally, I would rather do something else. But the Hokage himself asked me to. He purposely twitched his right eye to see if they caught it. Anata tilted her head. The other two were not trained in avoiding giving things away be subtle facial movements. But she had been learning ever since she was three. And normally, now, she could do it. The right side of the head meant that he was using the left, creative side of his brain instead of the logical, right side. You are lying, Hinata said. Very good, Kurinai said to her. I am Yuhi Kurinai, Kanoha's Jinjutsu mistress. I will be teaching you Jinjutsu as well as keeping a cool head and stone face. She looked at them and judged their reactions. Kiba was as open as a book. Hinata held very little. While well, Naruto told the most as well as the least. His face was written all over with loyalty and duty. The only time that changed was when he glanced at Hinata. Now, it has come to our attention that you three have been sharing skills with each other. Particularly your swords, Hei looked pointedly at Naruto. Your partners, he looked at Kiba. And your composure. He finally looked at Hinata. Naturally, you are each strongest in what you brought, Kurinai said to them. This is correct. The three nodded. We can't help you with the things Kiba knows. But between the two of us, we know just about everything there is to teach you. Hey, it coughed. Now, we will do introductions. This is to get you to know us and us to know you. I will start it. My name is Jeku Haid. My likes are few but simple. But I care the most for my girlfriend Yugao. My dislikes are those that think that Kenjutsu are outdated. That in modern warfare, there isn't a place far the sword. Our very history is from the sword. Because our land was formed. Was formed when the gods were making a sword, Naruto finished for him. They dipped it into the ocean and lifted it out. Five perfect drops fell from it and mixed as they landed back into the ocean. Forming the elemental continent. Yes, Hei told him. My hobbies are weapon practice and maintenance. My dreams are not for children. They frowned before Naruto straightened. A catchy Naruto. My likes are my family and friends. My dislikes are those who would hurt them. My hobbies include painting and wood carving. Kibble looked at him weirdly. What? You didn't expect me to wear this all the time, did you? Not actually, I kind of did, Kiba replied. Anyway, my dream is to show the world that ninja are not the only force there is. That samurai still exist and and are still as powerful as before. Kurinai nodded. My turn. I am Yuhi Kurinai. My likes are kind of private, sorry. I dislikes are cigarette smoke, rude men, and those that judge a person's strength by gender. My hobbies are hanging out with my friend Midarashi Anko and something very private. My dreams for the future is to be able to have a family and be there for them. Oh no. I am Hayuga Hinata. My likes are lavenders. And Sakura. Her hand caressed her preserved Sakura hairpin. I also like something else, but I am sworn not to tell anyone of it. My dislikes are those that judge before they know a person and a person blaming fate when they can't blame anything else for something wrong happens. My hobby, my dreams for the future used to be to make a good clan leader. But I have a different one now. To live a life of no regrets. Best for last, Kiba stated. In Yuzuka Kiba. God is memorized I like dogs, hunting, and proving that no one can beat my clan. Naruto coughed, but Kiba ignored him. I hate fleas. To no end I hate them. Akamaru growled in agreement. My hobbies are training with my friends, of course. And my dream. I plan to be the strongest in my clan. Nothing is going to keep me from that. Good, now that is out of the way, introduce your respective partners, Kurinai told them. Naruto picked up Kitsu and put the fox on his lap. This is Kitsune Kitsu. He specializes in precision bites and tears. Saw him take down a deer once in a single bite to the throat. The fox yawned. They do not seem boring, Naruto said to him, making the other sweat drop. I'm sure they don't want to give you attention. They don't want to give you attention. He wants some attention, Kurinai sensei, hey sensei. Kitsu jumped into Kurinai's arms. Oversized kit, Naruto muttered. He also has a little control of fire. Kurara has better. Anada pulled a ferret whose body was longer than her forearm and tail half that from the inside of her coat. 
Neither Joan and Evan had noticed when they examined the three. This is banded. She is fast, lithe, and agile. She is. She blushed a little. She is my spy whenever I wonder what is going on where I am not allowed to go. Though she seems to spend a lot of time asleep, she is only conserving energy for when she must move fast. She made a squeak sound, and Bandit was wide awake. Show them your speed. Bandit stuck her nose in the air and looked around. She then crawled down Hinata, along the floor, over Naruto, around Akamari's waist, and up onto Hei's shoulder. All in the same instant. Both Jonin could follow her movements, but knew that no Jenin and half the Chunin couldn't. Bandit twitched her nose. Once, twice, three times before she climbed up on his head. She then stood on her hind legs, looked around, before climbing back down, climbing up Hinata, sliding through the opening at the top of her coat. Where the two Jonin could no longer find any proof that the ferret was there. No bulges, no movement, it was like the ferret no longer existed. And this is Akamaru Kiba said. To which, the puppy barked. He is a powerhouse. He is the farthest along among the three. Alright, now for our first mission as a team. Tomorrow, you will be at training grounds 8 no later than 0800, Hey told them. Your first mission will be a survival exercise. Naruto slowly raised his hand. Is. Is there more for us to pass to become a ninja? There is, Kurunai told him. There is a 66 failure rate. Meaning that only 9 will actually become ninja. The others will return to the academy. She smiled at their determined looks. And you three plan to be three of those nine, don't you? Hey didn't wait for their answer. Bring your ninja gear and be ready for anything. With a cough, he shoeshined away. Followed by Kurunai. Training area 12 was huge, one of the biggest training fields there was. Roughly three miles across at all points, it was an open field. But this morning, something else sat on it. Four small forts made of wood without seams or joints. One of them looked more complicated than the others. Hey Aid and Kurunai stood outside that one in the center of the training field. When the alarm they had set went off at 8, they faced their students. It is very simple, Kurunai stated. You three will be having a battle royal to see who gets to stay and who gets to go back to the academy. On this battlefield, there are a total of four flags hidden in random locations. Meaning you might be given a keep with a flag, two flags or even none. Your goal is to collect all of them from their defenders. And that would be each of you. This one is ours. Inside, we will be able to observe your progress while be protected from any possible jutsu you throw around. Kurunai took a box from inside and held it out. Draw one and go to the assigned keep. After they did, Kurunai looked to Hate. Think they will figure it out. No doubt, Hinata will find out where they all are in five minutes. She and her ferret make the perfect spies. They went inside to the monitors and began to set up defense for when they were attacked. In the most defensible position in the center was the fourth flag. Akamaru, Kiba said as he gave his dog a soldier pill. Change into me and head to the fort. I am going to try to get the jump on one of the others. In a plume of smoke, Akamaru was no longer there. The second Kiba stood nodded and ran off. Kiba crouched down on all fours, growing more fear looking with each moment, and ran in the direction as Hinata. He didn't want to, but the choice was an obvious one. Naruto had as good a sense of smell as he did, always. Hinata could see all around her sometimes. His only worry was that Naruto would try the same thing. Or worst, leave his keep undefended, and both him and Kitsu were heading here or to his base. Hiding in the grass behind her keep, he began to do something he normally didn't. Think. Combat was all about reacting faster than the person you fought. The person that planned was too set following that course to be fast enough to alter it. Naruto proved that to him. But right now, he needed to. Hinata was just as dangerous as himself and Naruto. She was better with her hands than her sword, but her sword was lethal. So the front door was out. He could use the Gatsuuga and just plow right through the wall. But that had no subtlety and likely draw attention that he was here. If Naruto realized that, he would make for his base to get his flag. If he had a flag. That was another thing he didn't like. Going on this with only the presumption that she had a flag. His last option was to dig underground. He could do it and quickly. But it was more time consuming than the Gatsuuga. Stealth or speed. Going up to the wall, he dug down and over. When he passed the wall, he took something from his pouch. Making a hole in the roof barely big enough for his hand, he raised the contraption up through it. Hello beautiful. It was simply two mirrors placed at an angel to reflect an image around corners, or through dirt, to his eyes. And right now, they reflected a flag just five feet in front of him. Looking around, he saw neither Bandit nor Hinata. A good and bad thing. They weren't there to stop him. Nor were they accounted for. They could be anywhere. Not daring to go up personally, he pulled down his periscope and dug to the flag. When he had enough room, he pulled it directly down and made a beeline out of his cave to his keep. One flag down. Naruto either had the one or the two. He did not look forward to this. 
Anada nodded to Bandit and put a finger to her mouth. Both were up on the wall of her fort, looking down. Kiba had just stolen her flag. She knew because Naruto would have gone to the gate and issued a challenge for it. Which meant that only Akamaru was guarding their flag. The two women ran to the end of their wall and jumped off. Kiba had to dig back out as he pushed the dirt behind him. So they had free reign of his keep. And as they had nothing to protect, they didn't have to worry about Naruto. They crouched by the wall and pointed up and nodded. Ferrets were not just burrowers, they were great climbers. Hinata's claws easily dug into the finger and footholds that no one else could use. Beside her, Bandit was making better time. They both had something about them that made them cringe, but they lived with. Rabbit blood. Looking down, they saw Akamaru waiting, watching the door. They knew he would use the Gatsuuga at a moment's notice. And with what he thought as only one entrance, he was in a very dangerous position. Not to mention, he knew the scent of all those coming. He sniffed and smiled at the scent of rabbit. No doubt he wished he could be chasing it. Anada went around to the other side and held up a hand. When she dropped it, they both jumped down on Akamaru. They hit him pinned to the ground and Bandit raised a fist to knock him out. But Akamaru still used the Gatsuuga. Throwing both of them off, he growing at the two. They had the advantage. And he couldn't smell Kiba anywhere near them. But had to hold them off until he came back. Anada flexed her claws. Juakin was dangerous. But with her claws, what was simply a strike that stopped Chakra to the arm, nearly took it off. She rushed forward while Bandit waited for an opening. Akamaru knew he was at a disadvantage but fought back as hard as he could. When he saw Naruto and Kitsu standing at the door, flag tied to Naruto's back, he let out a groan. Biba skidded to a stop when he saw Naruto standing there, his arms crossed. He would only be doing that for one of two reasons. Waiting for him. Or waiting for a fight to finish. Kiba, Akamaru is in trouble. The second one. Damn. He jumped over and saw a bloodied up version of himself fighting a fanged and clawed version of Hinata. Bandit, looking like Hinata, was not five feet away, flag in hand, watching for an ambush. She locked her eyes on Kiba and crouched a little. Kiba wanted to deal with her first, but Akamaru needed help. Anada saw him behind her thanks to her by Akigen and heard him through her increased hearing. It wasn't as good as either Kiba or Naruto, but it was good enough. She ducked the punch, letting it fly into Akamaru. Or it would have. But Akamaru ducked with her. He grabbed the flying Kiba, spun him around and sent him at Hinata. She hit the wall, having been too committed to the attack to do anything about it. Bandit jumped in front of Hinata, the flag held like a staff. Kiba absently wondered if she could use it as a weapon or if she was going to just flail it around. Now that we are all here, Naruto said, pulling both the fox fang and claw out. He gave the fox claw to Kitsu, who was also in his hybrid form. Kiba didn't wonder about the same thing with Kitsu. He knew he could. He jumped back to Akamaru and they looked at the two pairs around them. Each held a flag. His brain was still warmed up from when he was thinking about what to do so it clicked. Hinata, I hate to admit it, but we can't likely beat Naruto and Kitsu by ourselves. You. Are probably right. Work together on this and then finish it between us. Final winner takes all four flags. Silence stretched out after he said it. Then they all asked. Where is the fourth flag? As one, they looked out the door facing the center keep. The keep where Kurinai and Hate were at right now. And the only place to hide the final flag. We have been tricked. No, they said it would be in the keep. Just not which one, Naruto stated. Dot we can try it alone and fail her together and maybe win. Don't sound too pessimistic, Kiba grumbled. Yeah, there are two Jonin in there. But there is still six of us. Six Jenin, Hinata corrected so very lightly it was only thanks to their increased hearing she was heard. Dot Kiba, how did you get Hinata's flag, Naruto asked. I dug under her keep. Can you do it faster with Akamaru? Faster than you could believe. Anada chan you and Bandit can climb the walls. Kitsu and I can hold the door. He was compiling their skills to see what they had. He thought about it for another minute. I have a plan to get it. After we do, if we do, we can settle it. Hammers are all out, Hate said to Kurinai. They are coming in. She checked her watch. Faster than I thought. The other three keeps were just four walls. But this one had more thought put in it. The outer wall had a door to a courtyard. It led to a cube pretty much. There was a roof that was blocked by three feet of the hardwood. The door to the room faced the rear to the keep. And in the covered hall waited some interesting surprises for the genin. Which were heading down the hall in two groups. Water clones and earth clones of the two were there, waiting. They weren't that powerful, but they were able to hold them off a bit. Maybe even injure them. But definitely not enough to kill them. There came a powerful slam against the door. Then another. Finally, it broke and standing there was a battle war Naruto and Kitsu. Just the two. On his back were the three flags. The fourth flag, surrender it. They were shocked. They had heard Naruto was powerful but not this strong. 
In the hands of the two lookalikes were his swords. Cough. I have this one, Kurinai, Hei said as he drew his own sword. Impressive, Naruto. You completed what we said. But not what we meant. I don't know, Naruto stated while the two entered the same stance. They ran forward, making sure to flip over each other to help confuse him. The two locked swords with Hei, pushing him back. Having not choice, he fell back. Ants of the Crescent Moon. Several clones appeared, attacking Naruto. Well the real Hei jumped into the air and brought the flat of his blade down. But it was only met by the swords the two carried. How? Bunshin don't have a scent, Kitsu told him. It was hard to make out, but possible now that he had lips and a tongue that could make the proper sounds. The two raised a foot up and slammed them into his chest. Hei hit the wall. And you, Kurinai-sensei. She looked at Hei beside her then at Naruto. What was it I said I would teach you? In Jutsu, Naruto stated. Thank you, I have been waiting for you to say something. Go ahead. Atsuuga. It came from both the ground and the roof. Four drills went into the air. Two from the ground, two right through the roof. They hit the jonin against their chest. They hit the far wall and slid down it, unconscious. The six then faced each other. Now what, Hinata asked while she grabbed the last flag. Naruto faced them and hesitated. These were his teammates. His friends. He didn't want to hurt them. Thought I quit. He tossed another flag to Hinata and the other two to Kiba. They dropped their jaws. Even Kitsu was surprised. You can't quit, Kiba stated. I mean. We are a team. Always have been. You quit then you get sent back. I know. But I can't fight my friends. And we can't be a team without you, Hinata said. Kiba groaned before sticking his flags in the ground. I guess I do as well. Hey Kiba-san, Hinata asked nervously, you too. Yeah. I know you are going to as well so no point of me staying. We are a pack, and a pack member doesn't leave others to get ahead. Besides, whoever heard of a one genin team anyway? Hinata nodded before placing her flags next to Kiba's. And there is next year, right? No hurry. Just means we will be stronger than others when we finally get to it. Hinata smiled at him and Naruto both. Then we better wake our senseis up and tell them. She turned to them and was about to shake them when they disappeared in a plume of smoke. That was interesting, Kurinai said with a slight frown. She took a few dollars from a pocket and gave it to Hade. So, you three would rather be students than be without each other? I, all three said. I guess there is no choice. Naruto, I will inform your father, Hei told them. Kurinai-san will tell Kiba's and Hinata's parents. As the instructor for this team, I inform you. That you passed. She smiled at them as it sunk in. Kiba. Naruto said, looking at him. Does the increased hearing sometimes cause you to hear things that aren't being said? I though Kurinai-sensei said we passed. You did, Hei informed them. The truth is, you three have a lot of talent. The problem with that is that those with talent often places themselves above others, viewing them as worthless in comparison. I am sure you noticed that Sasuke slightly holds himself above others. The exception being Naruto of course. Right now, he should be beginning his test with Kakashi. Naruto thought about it for a moment. He will charge in alone because even though they are his teammates, they are fangirls. And he has only seen them as weak. I have spoken to Ino and Sakura. I know they are both not the strongest, nor the weakest, out there. And in the practice bars in class, I have beaten both of them. But together, they know what to do without even asking. If their test is similar to ours, I will say that Sasuke loses. Probably, Kurinai told them. But I didn't see that with you three. We both did and asked the Hokage to teach you. That is why we are here right now. That plan was perfect. Who came up with it? Taking back the fox claw, he raised his hand. I did, Kurinai-sensei. Kitsu was covered in smoke as he returned to being a fox. How did you come up with it, Hade asked. I was just thinking about it and took in what I knew that they did when they took each other's flags. Just needed to figure out how to apply it against you. But they were after the same things as you, Hade pointed out. How did you know they would not betray you? I didn't, Naruto replied. But the fact of the matter was that none of us could win while the greater enemy was out there. I figured they had at least two ideas how to win once Win took the flag from you. I did. But I couldn't forget they were my friends. So instead of victory, you chose loyalty, Kurinai stated. Yes, Naruto replied. Same here, Kiba told them. Ah oh, no. I'm not much without my friends. Ignore that, Naruto said with a smile to Hinata. She is very capable. She quit for the same reasons, whether or not she is sure of it. Well, I have nothing else for them, Hei said to Kurinai. You? No. Then be at the park fountain tomorrow at 0800. You are dismissed. Every ninja has a vision of what their first mission would be like. Rescuing a princess, fighting off one of the remaining biju that is hidden somewhere in the land, defending a town from a horde of bandits or enemy ninja hell-bent on your death. Not rescuing Tora the cat for the daimyo's wife. 
Nice kitty, Naruto said, holding his hands up placatingly. Come here little guy. The look like he would as long as he remained calm. Come here and we will go get you a saucer of milk and then return you to your owner. Wrong thing to say to this particular cat. Medic. Ow. Ow. There was so much that armor cat protect against. But once the offending object got under it, then it has become a hindrance to remove it. Then Naruto-kun, are you hurt bad, Hinata asked when she came running. Naruto was sporting cuts, bites, and scratches everywhere. He was grateful the cat had been too busy trying to hurt him to get away. Said feline was hogtied and struggling to escape. I will be fine. He glared down at Kitsu. And where were you during my torture? Kitsu gave him a pant. What did he say, Naruto-kun? Naruto glowered at the fox. He said he couldn't move. He was laughing too hard. Kitsu gave a cry that sounded between a laugh and hiss. And there he goes again. And it squeaked at him. Dot what did she say? Have you begun to figure it out yet? No, Hinata said dishearteningly. I haven't yet. We understand what we feel, I can tell when she wants to play, when she is tired or hungry. But only things like that. Well, you can't really expect things like this to happen just because you want them to. Give it more time. Also try unusual things like putting chakra in your ears and such. You never really know what could trigger it. They heard a sniff behind them. A Kodak moment, Kiba said. The two jumped away from each other and blushed. Kiba, you ass, Naruto growled. Ah, they don't appreciate us being here, Akamaru Kiba said to his partner. Akamaru moaned and barked a few times, making Kiba laugh at an inside joke. Mutz, Naruto muttered. Cough. I see you got Tora, Hei said when he appeared. We will head back then. After a few weeks of this and catching Tora at least once a week, even Naruto's patience was running thin. He had learned a great deal of it through meditation. But even a monk would be hard-pressed after this. Hey, sensei, Kurinai-sensei. We can't take it anymore, Kiba yelled. If I have to rescue another cat from a tree, I am going to hang myself. And being calm about this has gone out the window, Naruto said with his hand over his eyes. Kiba, I thought we agreed I would do the talking. Well, I can't. We have. You are making Hinata-chan nervous, Naruto warned. He understood why. Kiba could be scary when he was really agitated. Because he brings out his canine features without meaning to as well as having the sense of foreboding about him. That he was dangerous to everyone there. He calmed down right away. Sorry. So you three feel you have done enough demissions, Kurinai asked. Yes, Kurinai-sensei, Hinata replied. D-rank missions are to build teamwork. But it has only built stress for us. We. We need something that will not waste our abilities. Everyone was staring at her. Despite not stuttering and only rarely needing a moment to regather her courage when talking, she never spoke out like this, except when she felt most comfortable. There you have it, Naruto said after a moment. If even Hinata feels we need something tougher to sink our teeth into, then you know we have been at this too long. The thought struck Kiba, though he didn't say it. He did not want someone asking if it hurt. And if nothing else, getting a good beating will make us stop complaining. The two Jonin looked at each other. That was all they needed to say. Well, if you two are sure they are ready for something like this, I see no problem, Saratobi said when he was told the request at the mission's brief. Actually, Kakashi took his team out on a sea mission just this morning. Now let's see. There is a merchant caravan leaving Kanoha that will make its way to a gambling town to the northeast, then make some stops along the way to the land of waves. There is a request to help find a woman to be named later to collect gambling department. Him, a request for bodyguards in the near future for a movie production. He shuffled through more papers. Then there is the rumor of a monster along the coast. Dot when does that bodyguard request take place, Hayde asked. Three months from now. They put in the request to find out ahead of time just who will be protecting them. That would be good for them, Kurinai stated. Reserve that one for us, Hokage-sama. He nodded and gave the paper to Aruka. And for today. The two thought about it for a moment. The sea monster, Hayde asked. That would let them run off some steam, Kurinai told him. Where will it take place at, Hokage-sama? The monster is said to be in the triangle between the land of waves, the peninsula of the land of moon and the island to the east. It is rumored to be some sort of shark. The perfect chance to work on water walking, Hayde muttered. He then turned to his genins. Go get your equipment. Bring enough to survive for weeks. Naruto, this will be on the ocean, so consider your armor. I fall, I sink, Naruto said, dropping his head. Correct. If you feel you must wear it, there is a store that sells less constricting and heavy armor but it is also less protective. Thought I would be fine, hey, sensei. Then everyone, meet at Naruto's home in an hour. From there we will head out. Naruto frowned a lot as he untied the secure straps of his armor. Keep frowning like that and it will crease your face, Yuriko said kindly to him. Training and early today. No, Yuriko Niasen. 
We are going to a mission to the ocean and. He didn't want to say it. And armor and water only equals drowning. She stepped up behind him and wrapped her arms around him. Remember, it isn't your armor that makes you who you are, Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled. Is this what it was like to be held by your mother? I know but last time I didn't wear my armor was the time I needed the most, Kasan. He didn't even realize he said that until it left his mouth. I'm sorry I. Naruto, if you want to call me your mother, you may. She squeezed him a little to her chest, not caring about the edges. Thanks. Mom. Now let's get you out of that. Sometimes I think you feel that armor is your skin. She began fussing over him like any mother would, making him feel embarrassed. Mom. I have been taking this off and putting it on every since I was seven. I can do it myself now. I'm just worried about my son is all. She hugged him again and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Be careful, son. Just remember that you don't have to do things yourself. I will. Naruto felt odd. He had packed his armor and helm inside a scroll like the Hokage had shown him to. Leaving him to wear his hakama and headband. But he also felt good. He had a mother and father waiting for him at home. Friends and teachers waiting for him outside. Life is good, Kitsu. How so? Gotten something to eat. The fox sniffed Naruto and sneezed. Is food all you ever think about? I think about other things, Kitsu replied. Dot if we are going to the ocean, does this mean Koma won't be petting me for a while? Yes it does. Naruto grunted when Kitsu jumped up on his shoulders and wrapped his tail around his neck. You got to take care of me then. Spoiled Kit. Foxes are able to keep themselves clean. Despite what he said, he still reached up and scratched Kitsu's ears. Ready for this. The nine tails couldn't stop me. No, he would probably call you a bad kit and stick you in a corner. He laughed when Kitsu growled at that. There is really only two paths to take to get to the triangle that the Hokage spoke of. One was through the land of waves itself. Another was Port City just up the coast of the mainland. They actually needed both. The land so they would have a place to stop at while investigating. The port so they could search the triangle itself. After a day of travel, they came to a fork. Hayate and Kurinai had already decided. Time to let these three make some decisions and know the consequences of those decisions. Alright you three. Which way do we go, Hayate asked. The land of waves or Port City to the north, Kurinai stated. The three talked amongst themselves for a minute. Finally they nodded in agreement. We go both, Kiba said to Kurinai and Hayate. Naruto, Kitsu, and Hayate sensei should go to the land of waves to search for a place of landing where we can rest while not on the mission. While Hinata, Bandit, Kurinai sensei, Akamaru and myself go to Port City to get a boat. The two nodded, a sound call. But how will we contact one another, Kurinai asked. Naruto took off his quiver and ran a thumb over the only seal on it that was different than the others. Thirty arrows with an unusually silver head appeared. These are magnesium, shrieking arrows. The arrows, when lit, are viewable at night for over a dozen miles with normal eyes. Hinata-chan can see that easy. Well this notch in the hollow shaft makes a loud noise. He lifted one to his mouth and blew in the hole. Even with that slight breeze, it resounded in their ears. If Hinata cannot see it, Kiba will hear it. Again they nodded. Good plan, Hayate said to them. Naruto, come with me. Kurinai, we will see you in a week or less. With a wave, they went their separate ways. Naruto and Hayate were walking down the path at an even pace until Naruto smelled something. Team 7 had walked this path just hours before. But now, two new scents were present. And they smelled of iron and poison. Hayate sensei, I think Kakashi and his team were attacked here. By ninja or prepared bandits. I smell some strong poison. Hayate looked around and found further proof. He tapped on Naruto's shoulder and pointed at a tree with a disgruntled pair of Miss Ninja tied to it. What the hell you looking at, Gauza, the one with the single spike from his headband and two port breathing mask, yelled at them. As if this wasn't bad enough, Maizu, the one with the two spiked headband and single port breathing mask muttered. Now we are being mocked by wandering ninja. Samurai, Naruto corrected. Big fucking deal, they both said. Not much meaning to that title anymore unless you are an Oda, a Kechi, or a Hosogawa, Gauza continued. The Oda and Hosogawa are all related to mine, Naruto told Hayate with pride. There's as well as my clan lead to the creation of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. Both the demon brothers went wide-eyed. You are an Akechi, Maizu asked tentatively. Naruto moved the clasp of his cloak so they could clearly see the Akechi Sakura and the Daisho at his waist. Dot should we be grateful or consider ourselves dead men, Maizu asked his older brother. How so, Naruto asked. The Akechi are still known as the best swordsmen from Mist, even after what happened. Naruto flinched at that and Gauza wisely decided to hurry along. So our deaths at your hands will be fast. But, again, all that awaits us at your hands is death. Should I have reason to kill you, Naruto asked. They hesitated. We are missing Nin. So, Naruto replied. 
The Mizukage is a sadist that killed many good men and women to save his neck. He should have committed seppuku long ago. They breathed a sigh of relief. So what happens to us, Lord Akechi, Maizu asked. Burrito frowned. I am not clan leader yet, only clan heir. Sensei. Not leave them or kill them seemed the answer. They have been defeated and captured, no reason for the second, Naruto told him. But that gives them the chance to escape. Naruto tried to find an answer. We could bring them with us, he suggested. Now it was Hei who frowned. Naruto, what is wrong? They are from my family's home. And besides, they can't escape restrained like they are. Hei nodded. You are right. And it doesn't concern us either way. He turned to the two ninja. You may thank Akechi Naruto for your life. My choice wouldn't have been so kind. They continued down the road, at a faster pace than before. Not the Akechi are making a comeback, Gauza stated, looking at his brother with a smile. And wait to see how they stir the waters this time, Maizu replied. Why wait? I am going to love seeing Zabuza Sama's reaction to this. He leaned his head down and over. You going to respect me in the morning, Maizu joked while his brother cut the bindings with his horn. Shut up. Better make sure we keep a good distance behind them. Naruto, are you familiar with water walking, Haid asked when they came to the ocean. They had still to catch Team 7, but they weren't that far behind them. They would have caught them if they jogged a little. After all, they had to walk with a civilian. No I am not, Sensei. You use the skills you learn during our tree climbing exercises to walk on the water. The difference being that the amount you use will vary with how the water is. Like so. Hey, it walked out on the water. Right now, with the water calm as it is here, there is no trouble. But father out with it churning like it is, it is very hard. Naruto put a foot out on the water and tried it. Once it no longer sunk to the bottom he started moving out. He quickly found this far more difficult than even the tree climbing. Are we going to walk across, sensei? No, that is over a mile and a half away. I am only demonstrating. We will use this. He pulled out a scroll and unsealed a raft with a motor. They took it across and touched shore outside of town. Dot their scent is over there, sensei, not five minutes old. They ran after them, eager to make sure they were alright. They weren't. Run, Kakashi yelled from where he was captured out on the water. Dot okay, what did we miss, Naruto asked when they walked in on the scene. Everyone from the mist ninja with a huge sword to the fat drunk looked at them confused. What are you doing here, Sasuke demanded. We got a mission out on the ocean to the north of Wave, Naruto explained. Hinata and Kiba went with Kurenai sensei to get the boat while we were sent to prepare a suitable camp. What are you doing here? They are protecting that old man, Zabuza called from the water. Which I have to kill. Zabuza. Hate said, drawing his sword. I am, he replied. So this is more than a C-rank mission, Naruto asked Sasuke. What was your first clue? The jonin on the water with the sword bigger than you? Actually it was the two you left behind. Maybe we should have questioned them. Hayate was about to step out on the water when a water clone formed in front of him, as well as by the real Zabuza. Attack him and I cut Kakashi in half, the clone out on the water told them. Attack him, the clone at the shore told them, and I attack the kids and bridge builder. Water clone, Naruto said as he threw off his cloak. He looked to Sasuke, Ino, and Sakura. Ino, Sakura, think you two can hold him off if he gets past us. You know it, they replied. Go ahead and save Kakashi, hey, sensei, Naruto called to him. Sasuke and I can take care of the clone. Juijin Bunshin. Kitsu changed into a copy of Naruto and was handed the fox claw. Kambi Henge. Sauturu, they said together, and both grew fangs and claws. Ready sensei, they said. An Inuzuka, Zabuza asked. Nope, Akechi, hey, replied. The look on his face would have been priceless if he didn't wear bandages. Akechi? As in samurai. The one, Naruto started. The same, Kitsu finished. They drew their swords with their hands at the end of the handle. They then raised their off hand and put it at the end of the blade, while the foot of the same side moved forward. Zabuza recognized it as a thrusting stance. The strong leg was held back to push off. The off hand went with it to allow perfect balance. Adijutsu. This is getting complicated. The clone by the original started to swing his sword down. Hayate was there in an instant to block the sword while the original jumped back, already on hand signs. Daibakuryu no Jutsu. The clone as well as both Jonin were pulled down into a maelstrom. Gashakism. He slammed his hand down on the surface of the water, and five water sharks formed from there. The clone looked at the genin. So what are you going to do? While they are on the water, they are at their weakest while I am at my strongest. Right now, they are being eaten alive. Are you going to just stand there? Sasuke, don't move, Naruto yelled. Kurenai sensei made water clones for my genin test. They can only move so far from the original before they unravel. He must be pushing his limit. But we can't do nothing, Sasuke yelled. Who said we would do nothing? 
Both Naruto and Kitsu began return their blades to their Saya. They started going through the same hand signs. Sasuke saw this and smiled before going through a set of his own. Diatapa. Ikakyu no Jutsu. The two blasts of wind went one after the other. The first hit the water clone, blasting it back. Well the second merged with the fireball, making it stronger and went straight for Zabuza. Ah oh shit. Zabuza jumped off the water, dodging the now B-ranked fireball. He landed closure to the men made for the shore. Kakashi and Hei shot out of the water, looking worst for wear but alive. The clone jumped back to his feet and ran for Tizuna. Even as he swung, Naruto and Kitsu crossed their swords and blocked him. While Sakura and Ino took on the same stance. Shadow Mirror Dance. They jumped up Naruto's and Kitsu's shoulders and did an axe kick down on the clone, dispelling it. God I forgot how much those hurt, Naruto said to Kitsu. I haven't, Sasuke told him, having had it used on him just a few days ago during sparring practice. A couple of kids beat me, Zabuza said in disbelief. He raised the carry and blocked the sword strike from Heide. Rairiwu no Tatsumaki, Kakashi yelled before he spun in place, and a ball of lightning that turned into a dragon took his place. It shot at Zabuza. Or Yuudin, Heide shouted before a mud dragon rose from the bottom of the lake. In comparison, Kakashi's lightning dragon was little more than a lizard. After all, they were on an island on the ocean. Mud was plentiful there. The mud dragon roared before shooting projectiles of mud at Zabuza. They hit him in the trees, tearing those from the ground. A moment later, the lightning dragon cut right through the earth, gaining more power from it and hitting Zabuza. He was thrown well over 50 feet. I, cough, love it when, cough, juts us work well together. Akashi nodded. How do you like your devil? Medium or well done. So you would no jutsu. A third dragon appeared over the water and glared balefully at the other two. It had the advantage here. Lightning couldn't hurt it, while well, the earth dragon, its weakness, was weaker than it. It lunged at the lightning dragon. It became a battle to outmaneuver each other. But with two against it, the water dragon was held down long enough to be torn apart by the earth and lightning. I will not go down, Zabuza roared. Opcorn, Tazuna asked the genin as they watched. Where did you get that, Sakura and Ino asked. He just shrugged. Zabuza was in another string of hand signs when Shenbin suddenly rained down on his body. Took him long enough to hold still, a voice said before giggling a little. A hunter nin dropped from the tree. Landing next to Naruto. Are you really in a catchy? He is, Kitsu, the one she was looking at, replied. The hunter nin felt a blade by her neck. You are, Naruto asked. Well, you were kind enough to tell me your name, Akechi kun She disappeared and pressed a kunai to his neck. I am called Hayden. Ice, Naruto asked in disbelief. Yes, yes, the nin said. He was gone again and appeared hanging from the branch above his head. You are kind of cute, yes, yes. Naruto fell backwards, his arms windmilling. What is wrong with you? He tilted his head. Wrong. What? You prefer boys instead? She cast a look to Sasuke. No. While Kakashi pulled a small amount of needles out to be able to check for a pulse, Hayate walked over to a confused Naruto. She is a hunter nin, Naruto. I know that. I mean what is wrong with her? Oh. That isn't nice. She threw her arms down by her legs, turned around, and tapped her foot in agitation. Hunter nins have it hard, Naruto. Sometimes. Actually most times, they develop these quirks. You call this a quirk? Hey, shrugged. She is a teenager. How did you know, she asked, her anger already forgotten as she was rubbing the fox ears of Kitsu. The fox had lost his jutsu in the first five seconds. Excuse me, Hunter Nin, don't you have something to do, Kakashi said, walking over and pulling his headband back down. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. She vanished and appeared by Zabuza. I would do it here but too many witnesses that might try something, yes yes. She and the body vanished. What an odd character, Hate stated. He then turned to Kakashi. Need a hand. I might. He fell face down in the dirt. Dot need one. The hunter Nin was humming to herself as she began to cut the bandages off. Time to work, yes yes. Zabuza groaned as he came around. Don't tell me you are playing Hayden again. The hunter Nin shrugged, her personality calm now. It works better than the Suetin or Fuetin. But at least those two are normal. So what if Suetin is a Skyzo or that Fuetin is paranoid? He groaned again as he stretched his neck. How many did you use, 12? 16, one for all the pressure points on your neck, chest, and right shoulder. I think you got me with the first two. Had to make sure, Zabuza Sama. She lovingly patted his cheek, slipping back into Hayden. Yes yes, I had to. Don't do that. And take off that silly mask, the time to act is over. The last two people either expected to see entered the clearing. I don't know, Zabuza-sama, Gauza said to him. Seems like getting to know our enemy wouldn't be a bad thing. 
Yes, yes, Maizu said, no oneself, no one's enemy, and you have the key to victory. If I could lift my sword, I would kill you too just for acting that way as well. Never mind failing your mission. Haku removed her mask. What happened? The boy, Sasuke as he was called, is no mere genin. He is familiar with assassination and single strike fighting. I would say hi genin, lo chunin, Gauza said, all business now. The two girls, alone are only genin. Get them together and they synchronize to become a good team. And of course you met Sherigan Kakashi. You were not only outclass, Haku stated, you underestimated them. This is why we went first, Maizu told her. To find out what we were up against. It took longer to escape our bindings than we thought. But it is a good thing, in a way. We know our new enemies as well. Tell me, Zabuza ordered them. Deku Hei, the top Kenjutsu master of Konoha. And the boy is Akechi Naruto, son of Akechi Mitsuhide, son of Akechi Hidemitsu. And a second level master of Badajutsu. Thought the boy is dangerous in his own right, Maizu stated. But he obviously knows how to use the fox that travels with him in combat. During the second night, having to stay downwind of them for fear of him having the same senses as the Inuzuka, we saw him spar with the fox. He is excellent in Tajutsu as well. He carries no kunai, but at least a hundred arrows sealed inside his quiver. And he has a set of armor that is as strong as his blades. Other weapons. He was trying to counter an Ajitana, but he has little skill in it himself. I believe he is training to beat something that uses one. Odd I know they are here for a sea monster to the north. Where is the rest of his team? The Jonin named Kurinai took Hinata and Kiba to Port City to get a boat, Gauza informed him. When will they get here? Within five days. You will not be up by then, Zabuza Sama, Haku said to him. Then we will strike when I can. Three Jonin and six Jenin. This is getting more complicated by the second. Maizu, Gauza, help me up and get me back to the hideout. Haku, make sure to bring the carry. Of course, Zabuza Sama. Let me get this straight, Hei said after everything was explained. Gatu has all but taken over the land of waves. Cough. The only thing that is a danger to him completing this happens to be him. He pointed at Tazuna. He has the money and connections to find and hire missing ninja of the skill of Zabuza. Cough. And you want to hold him off with four genin and two jonin, as we are at our current strength. Naruto nodded to all of it until the end. And one fox, but yes. Cough. When our mission is to, cough, find a sea monster. Our mission is to prove or disprove there is one out there, Naruto replied. Which we cannot do without a boat. And it is probable some superstitious fisherman afraid of an old legend. Gurunai sensei, Hinata called as something come up the port side. Wales. The Jonin walked over to where her student was standing. Orca, she corrected. They are the largest species of dolphin there is. That one is huge, Kiba called from the other side. Kurinai looked and saw what must have been the pod leader. That she is, Kurinai said to him. Man, Naruto is going to flip when he hears about this. They are singing, Hinata said excitedly. Kurinai smiled at their excitement. These are the moments you don't imagine when you think of ninja. But these are the moments she treasured the most. Odd ma'am, the captain said to her. We are getting pretty close to the location it is said to be. Maybe we should turn back and move along the shore to wave. I know a lovely beach we can stop at for the night. He was very nervous. We'll keep going, Kurinai said to him. We are halfway there now. And as long as the killer whales are not concerned, we should not be either. Several started sky hopping. See. Not if you say so ma'am. But I would still feel more comfortable going around until we have to. Think of it like this, your job is almost done. They moved along for another half hour before something happened. The songs changed. Dot Kurinai sensei, is this normal? Hinata asked. The orca had stopped having fun and started swimming as fast as they could. They found something to eat. A much deeper, much louder, cry came from underneath them. The orca scattered. I think they are worried now, the captain yelled. Even as he said it, they saw why rising up from the water in front of them. It was huge and green. A shell covered its back. In its fang-filled jaws was one of the orca, struggling pitifully in its grip. The creature threw the whale in the air and caught it again in its jaws, in a better position to eat it. Behind it, three massive tails were waving about. Gur and I once heard a comedian say that in bad situations, first you say a word that describes the situation. Then you do it. She heard the captain yell, shit. Followed by the smell of him soiling himself. Turn the ship slowly to starboard, making sure to disturb the water as little as possible. I am going to cast a Jinjutsu so that it doesn't see us. What seemed like fog filled the air, and they slowly were able to get away from the hunting isonade. When they could no longer see it, only then did any of them think about wiping away the blood that showered down on them. Excuse me, the captain said before going to below deck. Thibba walked slowly to the side and puked in the water. I think we just proved there is a sea monster in this triangle. 
Both Hinata and Kurinai slowly nodded. Naruto was practicing his sword strikes that Hei Sensei had taught him. These were nothing like Badajutsu because it required both hands on the sword and for it to always remain out when fighting. While many strikes with Badajutsu were from the sheath whenever possible. It was a concept that was so basic to understand, but one that went against Naruto's training. But he wasn't one to quit. Not bad kid, a guy said behind him. His tanned face and sun-bleached hair said he was a traveler. He had a bamboo staff in his hands, over his shoulders. You almost look like you know what you are doing. Naruto arched an eyebrow at him. I might at that. He made his flourish and sheathed his sword. You are. No one important. Just a road-weary traveler. On an island that has no easy path to it. Some miles from shore. That is why I am weary, he said with a crooked grin. So, those for show are you a warrior? A samurai. Ah, I heard about those. Not many of them have been seen in the last hundred though. I heard that Gatu of Gatu Industries has two as his personal bodyguards. Naruto growled. And when I meet them, I won't even give them the chance to have seppuku. Hey there, easy tiger. Just saying. Dot I always wanted to fight the best though. And even now, samurai are considered the best. He spun his staff and brought it level with the ground. Think you can take me? Naruto looked at it then at him. The greatest swordsman in the world only lost one fight in his life. It was against a farmer with a staff. That a no. I am saying what I expect. I am a student, not a master. You hold that staff like you are used to it. You have a longer reach. And are able to turn aside blows from a sword with that. The arched an eyebrow. What does that mean? That bamboo did not bend as you swung it. Meaning you have an iron rod inside it. He grinned. You are correct. Well, nothing for me to do here then. Bye. He walked away and Naruto watched him with mild interest. He then shrugged before continuing. Maizu was nodding to himself. Observant. Guess it will have to be Haku that finds out more about him. And through him, his sensei. Bakashi woke up to the feeling that something wasn't right. Hey, Zabuza. Is not dead, I know, Hey told him. I only realized it after the hunter took him away. They said it at the same time. Hunter nins destroy the bodies there. Bakashi sighed. Can you take care of their training? Tree climbing. Yeah, cough, but I will have Naruto water walk. He tried it on the way here. Wasn't too bad. The sound of sparring came from outside, and Hei looked out the window. Naruto had finished his training but still wanted more. Sakura, enough of these love taps. You are a Kanoichi so act like it. As he finished those words, Ino kicked his knees out from under him, and Sakura kicked him on his chest, gaining a thud from his armor. He fell to the ground and began to roll. When he came up to his feet, he said, looks like you are starting to get serious. You are going to pay for that comment, they said to him. Naruto took on the tiger stance before his forward palm flipped to face the air and made the bring it motion. If you can. When it was over, all three were on the ground. Sakura and Ino were grinning in victory, their knuckles, elbow, and knees bruised and bloodied. While well, Naruto had a black eye, dislocated shoulder from when Sakura caught him by surprise and twisted it behind his back and several aches. He popped it back into place and looked at them with a smile. Thanks, Sakura-chan, Ino-chan. I needed that. I guess from now on I can stop holding back on you. Nani Naruto only laughed at them. That afternoon, Hei led them into the forest. Cough. We are going to train. Cough. No doubt, Gatu will hire more ninjas if Zabuza is dead. And if he isn't, cough, we will have him and the hunter nin to contend with. Cough. Uh, Sensei, Ino and Sakura raised their hands, are you sick? You have been coughing a lot. Never better. We are going to do tree climbing. Naruto will demonstrate as I am still worn out from the fight. He nodded to Naruto. He walked up and put a foot against the tree. Followed by another and was soon hanging from a branch. My team started working on this after missions the first day, so that is why Naruto is ahead of you. You do this by pushing chakra through your feet, Naruto explained. This is the hardest part. After that, you just find the right mixer to hold you to it. Too little and. His right foot fell from the branch before he put it back. He then stood on the trunk. Too much. The tree broke under his feet. Any questions? No. Then give it a try. So you can get used to it, start with lying on the ground to try it. Hey, Naruto, why didn't you tell me about this at home? I honestly thought you were doing it yourself. Sasuke frowned but nodded. It would make sense that teachers would start with something like this first, instead of learning to kill. Make sure to mark how high you get. He watched Sakura go first. She made it pretty far and was able to sit on a branch near the top of her tree. Ino made it halfway up the tree before her chakra started to give out. She slashed the tree and got on a branch. That isn't easy. The more chakra you have, the worse your control, Hei told them. Normally. 
I say both you and Sakura are about the same level of chakra, but Sakura naturally has better. Sasuke, you're next. He nodded and started walking up it. He obviously didn't start from a little and moved up because he began to break the tree with his first step. Stop and come back down, Hei said to him. Now take a look, you use too much chakra. He growled as he looked at it and then at Naruto still hanging from his branch as he gave pointers to Ino. I'll get it right this time. Good. Naruto, continue with your training. He dropped down and landed on his feet. Hi, Sensei. Sakura will work with him and I will guard Kakashi. Hi, Hei Sensei. Yes. Quality time with Akechi Kun. We will be down by the beach, Sensei, so that I can signal Hinata chan or Kiba when they come this way. I will also camp down there until they get here. Hei nodded and walked away. Naruto turned to Ino and gave her some last minute advice. He then watched Sasuke try it. Relax, Sasuke. That is what you are doing wrong. Shut up, Sasuke said, with a slight nod of appreciation. Naruto reached the shore and looked out on the open water. Been a long time since I last saw this. You have been to the ocean before. Yes, Naruto told her. My father and I traveled before we settled outside of Kanoha. I saw the ocean a few times from the former land of whirlpools. Cool. No, not really. You know the phrase about how strong the Kaiubi was? About how a wave of its tails could level mountains and cause tsunamis. Yes. Naruto looked at her and let it sink in. Oh. That's right. Iwa controls that land but really, no one is left to care for it. Which is a shame. I felt really at home there. From what little was left unravaged, it seemed such a quaint country. Nature is regrowing and people rebuild so maybe one day. Naruto took a deep breath and reached into his pack and took out a scroll. Unrolling it he placed it on the sand and wiped the seal on it. Camping equipment, survival gear and other things appeared in a puff of smoke. I'm taking off my armor and show you how to do it. Then, while you train, I will set up my camp. Carefully taking it off and placing it on a silk blanket, he then pulled off his shirt. I don't have this down, but it is strenuous so you might want to put on some swimming gear if you have it. He nodded to Kitsu who changed into his human form and turned to Sakura. Turn around. She pouted but did as she was told. Damn it. I just missed the perfect chance to find out if he wears boxers or briefs. I'm ready, Naruto said to her. She turned around and almost got a nosebleed. He stood there in navy blue swimming trunks that gripped his legs tightly but, unfortunately, not the crotch. But it still gave her an idea. Do you have any cloths to change into? Ah, uh, no. Naruto sighed before reaching into a bag. He pulled out a t-shirt and second set of shorts the same color and material. These shouldn't be that big on you. He tossed them to her and turned around. You too, Kitsu. The fox growled, changed back into a fox, and did as instructed. After changing, Naruto went to the water and did the same as he did before. He actually found it a lot easier without his heavy clothes and armor on. Just like this. Don't go too far out because if you fall in, you have to swim back. And there are undercurrents in the ocean. Get caught by one of those, and you will be pulled out to sea. He walked farther out and soon began to sink a little. The deeper it is, the rougher it is, the harder it is because that is more chakra you have to expend to get a solid enough surface to walk on. That is why you stopped after going down a few inches, Sakura reasoned. I believe so. He dropped the rest of the way, sinking to his knees, and walked back ashore. While Sakura gave it a try, he set up his camp. Most of it was just pull in place, having been preset before being sealed. Sakura went back after drying out by his fire round 8. Naruto then changed to some dry cloths himself and watched the ocean. Him and Kitsu took shifts, so there wasn't a chance that to miss them. Aku, relax, Gauza said to the teenager. What if he recognizes my scent, she reminded. Or the fox does. That is why you have the perfume and the vixen. Maizu pointed to a cage with a sedated fox in it. She was out right now, but she was also in heat. She'll handle the, the kit. You handle the boy, no worries. She sighed. Who should I go as? Skip the false persona and be yourself. We are not looking to trick him right now, we are looking to gather information. She sighed. Myself. Only person ever interested in myself is Abusa Sama. I will give it a try. She finished her shirt and grabbed her basket. Might as well get some herbs while I am out there. She came to Naruto's camp and looked at them. She was downwind of them so she wasn't afraid they would smell her. She waited until it was Kitsu that was awake and released the vixen. Using a bit of chakra, the fox woke up and was spooked by Haku. She ran right through camp and instantly caught Kitsu's attention. The two foxes ran off into the forest, chasing each other. Waiting a bit to make sure that he wasn't coming back, she walked in. Luckily, it was after dawn. His nose twitched as she walked near him. She rekindled the fire before reaching down and shaking him. Hey, you are going to get sick if you sleep with your fire out again. Huh? 
What? His head fell back to the ground and Haku sweat dropped. He was harder to wake than the fox. And as she couldn't use chakra or she might give herself away, she had to do it another way. She took the worst smelling herb she had, she placed it under his nose. His eyes snapped open and his hands came up to his nose. Ah. It burns. Rubbing his nose and rolling around in his sleeping bag for several minutes, he growled. Kitsu, I am going to make sure your next bath is. Kitsu. Where did that fox go now? Kitsu. Is that the name of your pet fox? Haku asked as she sat down next to him, making him finally notice her. Oh, good morning miss. He stood up, wearing jeans and a white t-shirt. Somehow, he had slept with his sword still at his waist. He gave her a bow. Kitsu is my partner. Do you know where he is miss? I saw two foxes running by just a few moments ago. One of them was a girl and had a musky scent about her. And you don't have to call me that. Thought she was in heat, Naruto muttered. He sniffed the air and found Kitsu had gone after the vixen. Thinking with the wrong head. Excuse me, Haku asked. I'm sorry. And thank you for waking me. It is alright. Are you a ninja? Well, sort of, Naruto said with a hand behind his head. I am actually a samurai. She grew cold. Oh. She stood and was about to leave. Did I say something wrong, Naruto asked. The only samurai around anymore are the ones that work for Gatu. Naruto growled at the mention of them again. And I will kill them when I meet them. Haku hid her smile. You don't work for him. I do not. I am the samurai of Lord Siratobi, the Hokage of Konoha. But you said you were not ninja. It is a title, one I barely recognize as mine. I am first, foremost, and only the samurai Akechi Naruto, heir of the Akechi clan. Isn't that something that you shouldn't proclaim? Being heir and all. Anyone that is able to capture me deserves to. Oh. She smiled, placed her basket on the ground, and tackled him to the ground. I just did. Can I keep you then? Naruto laughed before his hands held her waist and lifted her off him. No. And why would you want to anyway? She looked a bit abashed. Everyone knows the stories of women getting a better life by falling in love with a samurai and marrying them. Naruto remembered the condition the town was in and nodded. I understand. But I can't do that. Perhaps I can help you some other way. Um. Maybe I can stay with you for a bit. Gatu's men took my home. Of course, Naruto said instantly. You are. Haku. Haku, what is mine, is yours. I will be right back with some breakfast. He grabbed his bow and stepped into the forest. She knew he wouldn't find anything. There wasn't much to hunt on this island anymore. Naruto walked back in with three rabbits. Got it. I also got some potatoes, berries, though they aren't the sweetest, and I think I got some other things to make a stew. Where did you get those? He tapped his nose. I knew where to look. He skinned the rabbits expertly after setting a pot to boil so fresh water. He reached into a dish he had filled with sea salt he had boiled away yesterday, put a pinch in the water, a cup of milk, cut up the potatoes, a few carrots, some fish chips, peas, and a few other things. After it had cooked for a bit and the scent filled the camp, making Haku's stomach growl, he gave her a bowl. Enjoy, Haku-chan. The truth was, even for her and Zabuza-sama, food was scarce for them. They always had some but not much. She almost cried as the excellent tasting stew hit her tongue. Naruto chuckled as she quickly finished the bowl. That was very good, Akechi-san. Naruto, please. And thank you. Eat, eat, I have more supplies. So, what brings you out this way? I was gathering medicinal herbs hoping I could sell them. Naruto nodded. Should have known that was what woke me up. Nothing tastes or smell worse than medicine. She chuckled, still remembering how he reacted. So, why are you here? Waiting for the rest of my team to come here. Oh, you here to kill Gatu and his ninja. Not originally. But I can't leave now that I know about it. We came to investigate the rumors of a sea monster to the north of here. He looked out over the water. I hope there is none. Enough monsters in the world as is. Like Gatu, like his samurai. Care to talk about it? Ah, uh, maybe that will help. We set out from Kanoha four days ago. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.